Hey. Hey. Ooh, sorry. Hey, right. listeners, I'm coming in hot. <laughs> Guess what? We did a live show last year, oh. and we had so much. What? I I was I thought I was guessing. Guess what? Thought I was talking to you directly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a listener. You already oh know. Oh my god. Okay. Shut up, Dan. Uh, <laughs> not me. Other Dan. No, you're my best friend, and so oh. are you two. Oh my god. We're all best friends, and because um. we're all best friends, <laughs> what? Okay. Well, I just was afraid for a second because I thought we were best friends, <laughs> yeah. and then you say right in front of me that Dan is your best yeah. friend. Then I expanded the best friendship okay i was yeah. nervous because we're all best friends because we're so good at being best friends together we are going to do another live show in the year 2019 we had a great time last time we watched men in black many of you were there it was great we're gonna do it again you should come again yeah you can yeah. go to live.totesrecall.com for details we'll update it can we uh, tell them it's the princess bride oh yeah it's we're gonna watch the princess bride on march 7th on march 7th at the trilon theater uh, yeah, yeah. Minneapolis. Minneapolis. It's the same place as last time if yeah. you were a super live totes head from last year. Yeah. It's going to be great. Go to live.totesrecall.com for details. We'll update it dynamically as we learn stuff and actually have things to tell you. Uh, but also... Oh, you're playing tickets now. Oh, yeah. Hey, out-of-towners. Hey, <laughs> Australians. Yeah. Now's your chance. Look at you, Australian friend. I don't know how much those tickets cost. It might be worth it. Get down to Bill's Beach. Be- what? And surf your way here. Oh, surf your way here. Start wow. Now. Then you definitely need to start at least now, if not before this ever happened. Yeah. Uh, but hey, another way to keep up on all these hot deets uh, will be to subscribe to our newsletter. Oh. Did you know we had one? We I do. thought newsletters were boring. No. And this... I thought we stopped doing ours. Hey, you know what? We did. That's our bad. But you know what? We're starting again because you can do that in this great digital age we live in. Yeah. Uh, Go to itotesrecall.com yeah. for subscription information. There's probably a button. Yeah, if you scroll down to the bottom, there you go. there's a little thing that you can fill out with your name and email address. And we will send you some stuff. There will be, uh, You'll get a sneak peek of what movie we'll be watching yeah. at the next episode. So you can prepare. So you can prepare and be cool and tell all your friends, like, it's totally going to be whatever movie it is. Yeah, when you're sitting also, around the water cooler. if you sign up for it, maybe sometimes somebody will like write out the lyrics to their rap like a Will Smith rap. Yeah. I mean, there's been good content in I the agree. past. I agree. I feel yeah. like we have done, hey. I've there will a, be in the future I'll tell well. you right now, I have a totes regret that is Ooh, heartfelt. Oh, so good. And real. Yes, it And is. that's in the newsletter. Yeah, you learned some, the current, most recent, come soon to come newsletter, you learned some <laughs> fun details about Molly Chase, the 10-year-old, <laughs> that I found charming and delightful. So get on it. Yeah. Dot com. Dot com. Get on it dot com, but actually totes recall dot com. <laughs> Totes Recall. Oh, ho, 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 Holiday podcast Whoa. where we talk about a movie we can't remember because we had too much eggnog. Wow. Then we talk are, about are it again. Are you like legit just summarizing the podcast so people can understand it? Yeah, that's how I always start it. <laughs> yeah, he's just doing it in a fun voice this time. <laughs> okay. Sorry, you better can ahead. it or you're going to get some coal in your oh. stocking. Wow. <laughs> That My is name a is... little more sexist sounding than <laughs> Santa usually talks. That's probably not true. Danta. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Molly Christmas. <laughs> uh, this is Dan the Snowman. Who cares? <laughs> Snow Dan. No, yeah, I'm also Dan. I'm Beth. Thank and you. our <laughs> movie this episode <laughs> Is it's a wonderful life? That's right. Yes, yeah. correct. Yes. Ooh, I was going into that, not knowing if it was yeah. that one or I Miracle could, on the Numbered Street. I could see 34. the beads of sweat forming on your forehead yeah. as you took that dive. Yeah, mm-hmm. but neither of them have I seen. Wow. Uh, both classic Christmas movies. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, both in black and white. You I'll just bet yes. about the one yeah. we're actually Let's, watching. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds fair. Um, <laughs> this is what I think. Yeah. Do, should we do both movies? Oh, <laughs> what Simultaneously, we'll play them on two different both. TVs. Wow. Yeah. 
I really, I, I, the thing I was thinking about when I was thinking about this podcast today is how this is one of those movies that I watched in pieces for a long time before yeah. I ever got to see it all as a complete On the TV. movie, right? right? It's also, in my mind, merged with uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, mm-hmm. oh. just because the same thing happened. Hold on, hold on. Um, But yeah, there, is there a word or a phrase for that? For what? For a movie Conflated? that you finally see after oh. having seen bits and pieces of it. On cable Is there television. a German word for that, Beth? Um, I don't. <laughs> it's like stitching, filming. Piece. It's, it's stitching, filming. Piece, <laughs> piece then hole in film. All right, Dan, you've never seen this movie. I've never yet. seen this movie. Here's what I think this movie is about. Great. Other than a wonderful life. Let's go for it. It's in black and white. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Jimmy Stewart okay. is Very the lead. Do you think he's credited as Jimmy or James? What? Yeah. I mean, Jimmy, because I didn't know he was ever All right, right credited as James right Stewart. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, is this the Christmas movie where someone wants to kill themselves? Merry the- Christmas. <laughs> 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 uh, is uh, an angel gets its wings when a bell rings? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good job. Okay. <laughs> that's the quote. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the quote that everyone says all the time. Uh, Maybe there's, oh, there's like a little boy. Okay. Okay. Jimmy Stewart's a sad businessman in New York City. Great. Uh, He's got a coat. Right down New York City. He's got a coat? Sorry, is that what (laughs) you just said? Yeah. He's got a coat. He's got like a a coat and it's in disrepair Uh and there's like a little boy who cheers him up. Okay. Maybe the boy's an orphan. (laughs) Oh, Oh, wow. Okay. Write that down. down. We're going to hold you to that Yeah, you're making hot bets. You got to write these down. (laughs) Like I mean, I want to say that he, te- that, he, that he teaches to steal, but it's definitely what? Oliver Twist. Are you, that is Oliver Twist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Uh, so his name is not Fagin. No. Uh-huh. No. Okay. Um, in the end, it all works out. Okay. And he lives. Great. Great. So you're saying Jimmy or James Stewart is the one who tries to kill himself. Yeah. Or thinks about killing Once, himself. He wants to because... Uh, uh, he lost his job. Ooh, mm, good at uh, being a salesman. Okay, what's he selling? Ooh, great. <laughs> uh, ba, 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 ba. This movie came out in black and white times. Uh-huh. <laughs> so <laughs> telephones, rotary telephones. Sure, okay. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, yeah, that's it. Wow, his, well, be- his best it. friends Willie Loman. <laughs> no, what no. Are you doing? <laughs> that's it. I mean, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. What, what movie, what year do we think this came out in? Ooh. Oh, 58. Wow. Okay. Ooh. Uh, 39. Oh, wow. Mm, I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. 50. They had color. 43. I just don't know if this is before or after World War II. Yeah. Because when did he go there? Wasn't he? Didn't he oh, serve? Oh, he was in the war. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to change mine to. 45. That's when we entered the war. No, that's when it ended. Yeah, but we didn't we only enter it until like 44? Sorry, World War II heads. Yeah, oh, yeah sorry. Shut up. So we were in the nerds. very end. So 46? Sure. Okay, All right, how many years 46. do you want to bet? All right, I'm just betting 46. <laughs> I'm going to say 42. Mm. God, I feel very foolish with 58, but... <laughs> That's what's on I the mean, paper. you already said he's a telephone salesman. So. What? You can sell rotary phones door to door. I'm not saying you can't. I had a rotary phone in my house. I'm not saying and you can't. Well I'm just saying that is a years. very beable bet. No, that's a very specific occupation for a movie. Yeah. Okay. Great. I mean, I got nothing else to say. That's okay. it okay. for me. Great. I've never seen it. And he's a rotary phone salesman in 1958 mm-hmm. who wants to kill himself. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Beth. Okay. So... I think he has a daughter. I don't know. I know he has a daughter, but I don't know if he has any other children. Ooh, but his daughter's question. name is Zuzu. Oh, Whoa. What is that short for? Um, Xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's with X's? I don't, no, it's, it has to be with a Z. But she gives him, at some point, she gives him petals, like from a flower. Okay. And so at the end of the movie, he's like, Zuzu's pet. No, that's a terrible taste. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's all... Let's all right now <laughs> declare at the beginning of the show, this is a safe space for all of us to do terrible Jimmy Stewart impressions. Sure. I want all of us to feel comfortable just going for it. I, ah, Zuzu's petals. Love it. I don't know if I've seen a Jimmy Stewart movie. Ever. Really? What? 
I haven't seen Rear Window. Okay. I haven't seen this one. Uh huh. Wait. Is there he are at in least nor- two others. Is he North by Northwest? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've seen that. All right. Okay. Vertigo. That's in color. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. And there's an airplane. Yes. Yes. True. Yeah. Probably no um, orphans in that one. In so many movies. I am shocked that you actually He was were like the Tom Hanks of his era. He was the Tom Hanks of his era. Oh, okay. Or Tom Hanks is the Jimmy Stewart of his era. Maybe yeah. it's more fair. That's more fair. Mm-hmm. Um, can I finish my story oh, about yes. Zuzu's so titles? The reason that I remember that is I was a an extra in a movie uh, that they filmed in Minneapolis. Uh-huh. Starring and Jason Bateman. Starring Greg Kinnear. Greg Kinnear. Yes. You knew this. Boom. I listen. <laughs> Have uh, I, I might have, I've probably talked yeah, about this on the I podcast before. I listen too, I just don't remember. I don't know if you ever talked about it on the show. Maybe So, I but I just remember him in between takes doing a Jimmy Stewart impression and yelling Zuzu's pedals and everyone Breaking was like, <laughs> yelling Zuzu? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all I, that's, um, it was a celebrity oh, sighting. Wow. <laughs> I love it. So that's why I remember that. But that's his daughter and his daughter is the one who says, um, Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Oh, I got She's that really right. Cute. I mean, you sort mm-hmm. of got that right. Yeah. Oh, you're pretty close. Are angels real in this? Yes. Yes, yeah. very. Oh, do they visit him like a Christmas story? Sort of. And like, yeah. be like, get get your shit together. Is he like um, a good Scrooge? What? No. Oh, no, not at all. Scrooge. You're thinking, you've gone down a Christmas carol path. No, no. Mm-mm. I see what you're saying, though. You're saying like, is he a good man, but he is also visited by weird ghost people. Yeah. Kind he's of. just visited by one. one angel. Yeah. After a bell rings. No. 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 No, he doesn't get his wings until after he helps He's somebody. like a garbage angel. Oh. oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like a fallen angel. He's a garbage angel. angel. Yeah. Or he's a new, new or whatever. angel. whatever. Like a yeah. junior, junior partner executive. or something. <laughs> oh, he's like an entry level angel? <laughs> yeah. 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 And he's very sweet. He's very And nice. he tries to help him. What's his name? Do you remember his name? Mm. Mm. I don't. That'll be fun to find out. Should we all guess the angel's name? Arnold. Norman. Craft. <laughs> Lear. Lear? Lear. <laughs> um, okay, go ahead. Yeah. He, something goes, he works at a bank, right? Oh. I think he does. And yeah, something because. goes wrong at the bank. Oh, there's a run on the bank. He, yeah, like, because they then lose he's all like, their money. I don't have your oh, money. So it's in, based in Fred's house. And That's this one? Oh, Fred. John's house or whatever. Is that what it is? Fred? Fred. Oh, the angel? Yeah. No, because yeah. Fred doesn't have a house. Huh? Why not? I mean, Angel well, that's house. at least not the house he's talking about. Okay, but Fred is like another character. I think so. I okay. could be making up names. So is this about Frank. the Great Depression, right when that happens, or is it just the local bank? I don't remember. There's a run on it, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there is definitely a Dan. You'll appreciate this. There's definitely like an underlying theme of like evil capitalists are the worst. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I can't remember if it's like directly related to like the national crisis or if it's just specifically. Yeah, maybe that it's just that town. Town. Yeah. But New York, it's New York City. the thing I remember. <laughs> Sure. The thing I remember most about this movie, though, when I finally did watch it all the way through, is it's not the saccharine sweet movie that all no. of the clips would lead you to yeah. believe it is. And similar to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, when it goes dark, it goes so dark. It's yeah. very dark. I remember watching this when I was a kid, but I only remembered watching the end because mm-hmm. maybe because like it's really long when it's on TV because yeah. they split up for commercials so much. So I maybe just like... I don't know, we were too busy eating while it started. Well, and they're pretty complicated issues, too. So maybe I just glossed so, over. So, yeah, you just wouldn't yeah. pay attention to I parts. always remembered just, like, more of the end part where it's just like, oh, the, like, here's some weird, you know, angel magic or, like, a, you know, kind of a Twilight Zone kind of deal where he's, like, figuring out what his life would be like without him or, yeah. what, you know, like, all the other mm-hmm. characters oh. in town or whatever. So, yeah, he's kind of a good Scrooge in that sense where, like, a mythical creature takes him in a hypothetical version of reality. Mm-hmm. Okay, Molly, so... Mm-hmm. Not so um, dumb, uh, but <laughs> yeah. The last time I watched it, which I don't remember how many years ago, is but like yeah, I remember like actually sitting down and watching the whole thing, probably still on TV. But like from the beginning, like I had totally forgotten like how much of the first half of the movie is like legit. Like oh yeah, his life sucks. Yeah, like a lot of shitty things happen to him. Yeah, he's got a bad life. I yeah. mean, he just has a lot of well, shitty things happen to him. Bad enough that he like considers killing, killing himself. himself. Yeah, oh, and then the angel Willie Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Angel is really low. Um, I did going that. Back on That's a bad idea. Yeah, um, I don't know. I was thinking of Kraft cheese, yep. and so I gave yep. Kraft was the name. Love it. Mm. I um, was thinking of King Lear. Oh, so I yes. gave Lear as the name. <sighs> Great. Um, so he he comes to say like, don't kill yourself because look at what life would be like without you. Oh, and mm-hmm. it's a wonderful life. Um, <laughs> no, no, it would be terrible. A, so he's a, realizing. His he's life. living a wonderful yeah. life. Oh, he's already living the dream. Oh, and, and there's that whole... It's not like the angel magically fixes him. No. 
it's actually very cool because the angel just shows him not to kill himself and then he gets to see it play out. The journey of self-realization. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not like the angel waves its wand and all of a sudden he has money. Yeah, it's not like that Glenda fine. bullshit. Yeah, Where well, it's that's like, true. oh, let me just come in and solve your problem right at the end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. There's also like, I was remember really, I remember being really surprised again, watching as an adult and watching the whole thing, like that there is actually like a lot to his relationship with that lady like at the beginning of the movie, his wife. Yeah, but like, but I mean, like, <laughs> but, he's, but she's not his wife at the beginning. That's what I didn't remember. Oh. Like, there's a whole like courting part of the movie oh. where he's like getting to know her and stuff. Which oh. famous actress is it that we can't remember the Ooh, name man, of? Man, I know. I feel terrible already. Like it might be. I don't know. Someone. I I learned something interesting <clears throat> about this movie mm-hmm. recently, mm-hmm. which is that. Um, so what this is all to say maybe she's not famous because apparently that mo- that movie was a flop when it came out and did not do well at all. Wow. Mm. Um. Which, what, that's what flop means. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's true. So, Thank you for clarifying for our welcome. listeners. Uh, so when the copyright on the movie was up yeah. and it was supposed to be renewed, no one renewed it because they're like, it's terrible. Wow. So that's why TV stations, they're like, oh, we need something to show at Christmas time. They were like, what about this crappy movie uh-huh. that nobody liked? And so because it was in the domain, public domain, that's why it was aired so often. And then people oh. kept seeing it all the time during, it's the most, I, I believe I might be, this might not be correct, but I believe it's the most aired movie on television. And so that. that's why, because free. it's free. <laughs> amazing. Tweet at us if you didn't know what a flop was until Beth explained it. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag didn't know flop. Didn't know flop. <laughs> flop teacher. What the, what are the flop you saying? Yeah. Like what that. the flop, Beth? What the flop? Yeah. <laughs> Any of those. All of those. Knowledge flop. Oh. Like a I knowledge like it, drop? Though. Is that a thing? Yeah. yeah. No, flop I like the mic? It. What are we doing? The flop, flop gives. Flop the mic. What? What? That's terrible. No, and that didn't work. No. Yeah. Sorry. I'm a, I have to go. <laughs> oh, no. You're the producer of the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what would the show oh, be like it. if Beth were never <laughs> here? <laughs> Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to edit this. Case. Hey guys, uh, ooh, uh, <laughs> oh, I spilled you ever everything see, on the you computer. You ever see that movie where uh, we're gonna? No, t- my the podcast isn't in my phone. It's in Molly's phone. <laughs> Let's take a break and eat lasagna. <laughs> oh, Garfield. <laughs> yeah. I love oh. how even the food would be different <laughs> without Beth. It that might actually be. might be, yeah. It really could be. I feel like Beth is very pro pizza. I am pro pizza. <laughs> and we stuck to it. Like mm-hmm. lots of podcasters could say, you know what, after four years, maybe we want to pivot to spaghetti. S- sell out. The most we've done is add salad. Right. And just so listeners know, we've switched up the salad dressing just a little bit. We're getting ranch Disgusting. as one of the options. I'm very against it. Uh, yeah, so we're working on it. We're working through it. But the point is, we've been very loyal, <laughs> not only to the podcast, but to our food selections. Yeah. Also, I should clarify that we get two salads. I don't know if we've ever mentioned that before. <laughs> and I patience. generally eat the other salad. One, because I think ranch is a travesty and a crime against humanity. What? Why didn't you say something all, when I was ordering Because it? we have two salads. Wait, and you I don't l- eat any of the one salad? Uh-uh. We don't I eat have to have only ranch. that one. Yeah, salad. and I eat only the Greek one, oh and God. you don't even like it that much because there's too many olives in it. Oh, I love the Greek one except the olives. Oh well, see there you go. So I eat all the olives. I give this... the olives to you. So it works out great. Why do I order the pizza? Because it... what do you mean? Well, what the pizza is the best the part. The pizza is the best part. You're <laughs> nailing the pizza. We all love the pizza. Oh, I have oh, to work boy, on my salad game. No, not at all. <laughs> I get plenty of salad. I'm like, I love this Greek salad. I'm so glad everyone else is enjoying the other salad, so we're not wasting salad. I try. I eat both. Good. That's great. All right. We well, don't all have to eat both salads. Well, I just if I could find a happy medium, I would the, do it. I'm, I would just I eat the Greek salad anyways. Okay. Because I'm not gonna. What am I gonna do? Fill up on two salads when I could be eating pizza? No. <laughs> it's a fool's game. Okay. <laughs> Nonsense. Well, crisis averted. <sighs> wow. Does this movie pass the Bechdel Walls test? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> great because, question. Uh, yes. Oh. I think it does. Ooh, doesn't she have because a mom? There's Zuzu. The, yeah. And a wife. Yeah, the yeah. Wife and have I, mom? I think she does have mom, <laughs> and I, there might be a woman that works at the bank. Oh, yeah, sure. There's some busybody ladies. Yeah, there's multiple people. There's a lot of people in the town. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of just like quirky townsfolk. Some and of them they have to address women. them as like Mister Quamquat mm. and stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like they're yeah. all Mister Quamquat. Yeah. Mister Quamquat. Quam-quat. <laughs> that would be a man, presumably. That, well, that mm. one. I bet that. Ooh, ooh, Dan's bet. It does pass the Bechdel Wallace because I'm gonna bet there are two adorable spinster ladies who 
talk about things all the like they oh, constantly like the just peanut gallery they just make comments about scenes all the time yeah. oh like uh, a Muppet movie? yeah 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 like they just cut to them just like oh what a really is I this a know. real bet it's a 1930s movie and they're in a there's always balcony? weird quirky characters for like little things where they do buttons while they do the the iris or whatever oh doris mm-hmm. i need some more popcorn yeah Oh, I'm really doubting my year Because wife needs to have someone to talk to when Jimmy Stewart's all busy being bank man. Wait, does wife work at the bank too? No, I don't, I don't think so. Oh. Unless it's so a family-owned family business. Is it a family bank? Is it like In her dad's oh, bank? Oh, is it her family's bank and he like brings it into the ground and that's why he wants to kill himself? Oh, he does mess something up. Ooh. Right? Ooh. Wow. I don't remember. Drama, this movie's drama. getting better and better. Right? Yeah. Hmm. I remember really liking this movie when I actually watched the whole thing. Yeah. It... Um, it will probably make one of us cry. Ooh. Whoa. Wow. One cry. One cry, you're putting one? that down? Best bet, one cry? I think at the end, you're like, it is a wonderful it's so life. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah. Aww. So why mm. um, why is this a Christmas movie? Because it takes place it during just, Christmas. Yeah. Like Die Hard. Yes. Well, okay. yeah. Yeah. But it literally has angels on a Christmas tree. Right. And okay. it takes place at Christmas time. Yeah. Like it does, I think it ends with a shot of a Christmas tree. Okay. But it's on Christmas? Parts of it. Parts of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. There might even be. Oh, is there a new year? Because they sing Odd Lang Syne? Yeah. I think Maybe there are multiple the ending happens. Christmases. Don't they sing Aren't Odd, odd Lang Syne? Oh, are you saying Odd Lang? Odd, odd Lang. Old. That old song. The song about <laughs> yep. being yeah. friends. They need to change the name of that song. So what? It's like words we Dude. know. Dude. <laughs> Right. What are you talking about? It's like A U L D. That's not a word we know. Not in English. Well, yeah. <laughs> Lang. Oh boy, what are you doing? So, so any song that's in a different language should wow. change it wow. Wow. so well, you can understand it. Not in a different language. Okay. Yeah. So when Feliz English. Navidad comes on the radio, you're furious. Well, I know that one. <laughs> Wow. I want you to bet on how you picture the evil capitalist in this movie. Oh, there is one? Yeah. Uh, top hat, okay. mustache. Okay. Uh, twirling that mustache. Mm-hmm. Uh, vest mm-hmm. with a pocket watch. Great. Spats. Ooh. That's too much. Okay. But I said it. Spats. Okay. You're not writing any of these down. You could just lie and say <laughs> you didn't say spats. They don't know I'm not writing it but down. I'll remember. Uh, yeah. Great. So you said mustache, top hat, vest, spats. Yeah. Twirling that mustache. Twirling that mustache. Are we is going there a monocle? Yeah, are we going monocle? Oh, sure. <laughs> it is the 30s, we assume. <laughs> I mean, he's almost a railroad villain at that point. I mean. I feel like I, I'll d- double Beth on that vest. Okay, okay. definite vest? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I feel like also he's probably rotund. Okay, oh, nice. Oh, I was because picturing of thin. But... Taking the okay. fat of the land with his capitalist but no, gains. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because if it's like during uh, the depression, right. like he's eating the all the food. The only one eating, yeah. yeah. He's eating all the food up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So That was the problem, right? All the rich people ate all the food and yeah, there was wasn't enough food left? Yep. yep, that is the only reason <laughs> the Dust Bowl happened because they were just eating too much of that food. Yep. Yep. And there was nothing in the ground to keep that dirt there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. So Rotund and Vest were for sure saying. And then Dan's going beel bold with top hat, mustache twirling, spats. Spats. <laughs> Yeah. Remind me what spats are. I think spats, uh, what I'm imagining, maybe I'm wrong about what spats are, is those two-tone shoes. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Maybe those are wingtips? Nope. Nope, this is incorrect. I'm incorrect that he's wearing spats or that's what spats are? That's not what spats are. What are spats? Are those spats, his tails? No. No, those spats are- Spats are shoe-related. Oh, okay. But it's a piece of fabric that goes over the laces. Oh. Spats. So they look of? two-toned. Your shoes mm-hmm. might look two-toned because the spats are a different color. Am I thinking of wingtips? I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. Wingtips are a style of shoe. Saddle shoes. There's one listener who, if she gets to this episode, will definitely tweet at us. Oh, yeah. To tweet us to uh, shoe so. heads out there. Mm-hmm. What that? Two tone shoe. And saddle then, shoe. Hashtag. Is it saddle shoe? Well, saddle shoe is a two tone shoe. That was not a hashtag. Dan got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> the one from the, uh, you know, when you're listening to swing music. Oh, Jesus. Okay. You wear those shoes. Great. Yeah. All right. Got it. Sweet. Some listener will let us know. Mm hmm. Maybe. Great. <laughs> Channing Tatum's a big dance head. That's true. Yeah. He should tweet at us. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Channing. Take a picture of your uh, jitterbug shoes. Okay. <laughs> what? Wow. 
What? Jitterbugs <laughs> a kind of swing dance? I mean, it's a kind of dance. Is it a swing dance? I think so. Ooh. I got well, an A in my ballroom dance class well, in college. Well, must so be nice. Wow. Wow. Come at me, dance heads. Is that required? I think it's very different no. dance. Okay. The jive? No, Which jitterbug one? versus swing. We are in the weeds okay. here. Okay, <laughs> all right. I was asking about evil capitalists. Now we're talking about Channing Tatum's jitterbug shoes. <laughs> All right, Dan. So, yeah. how many uh, bankruptcy angels <laughs> are you going to give this to? I like that. Um, okay, I remember this movie being super great and being like one of the best examples of like what people think of when it's like a classic movie that's fun. Maybe not fun, but like enjoyable to watch. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to be bold and say, Bill, Bill Bold Bankruptcy. <laughs> Baggins <laughs> and say five bankers wow. angels yes. floating around in a circle above my head. Ooh, oh, like right. a halo? Mm-hmm. Well, more like I got hit in the head with a sledgehammer in a cartoon. Oh, sure. yep. yep. Great. All right. Um, I'm probably going to give it four wow. because it's probably going to be good, but I'm probably not going to be like, <laughs> oh, I need to watch it again. Sure. It's so great. It's no Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, if you know what yeah. I mean. Hey. Wow. I do know what you mean, because I have seen that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and it is great. Uh, huh. I'm inclined to be a coward. Because it's, I mean, this is, uh, was a flop when it came out. Right. Didn't do well. Um, <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> but now it's like celebrated, and it's on the AFI, as we know. Why do we know that? Beth's seen it. All the oh, did we say that on the pop- we no. podcast? Podcast. <laughs> um, I've watched all the movies on uh, AFI's 100 list. No big deal. Mm-hmm. But it can't be that good, or I would have seen it by now. Wow. Wow. And also, I'm worried that I that most people have seen it as a kid, and that's and it's like the ritual and routine oh, no. is why they like it that's so much. That's just gonna be news. And I don't have that. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm not gonna be a coward. So I'm gonna say three. Point one. Oh my wow. god! What does that even mean? What? What's well, like point, bank, point one, one bankruptcy? I get, or like one of the wings it's going to so earn. So three of the oh. angels are bankrupt. And a bell rings, and a tenth of an angel is in debt. No, the angels aren't bankrupt. I thought they swooped in to save you from That's bankruptcy. That's right. Okay, three are saving you from bankruptcy, yeah. and one is like just got like a hundred bucks charging <laughs> up your card. And it's like, I hope this helps. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, amazing. That is amazing, actually. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go Beald Baggins Bold as well. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> um, how we say it. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say five. Nice. Let's because I think team it's a cello. classic for a reason. And, um, team Cello, Team Classic. Yep. That's wow. What That's what I'm betting on. I guess saxophones don't get to be part of Team Cello. You were said four. You were like way cooler though. There was nobody who was like, "Oh wow, you play the cello. That's yeah, cool." Yeah, nobody knew what it was. They were like, "Oh, you're like Lisa Simpson. That's so cool." They yeah. don't know what a cello is. I mean, they're, no, just, they're just like not in, impressed. Not by in like it. high school. They're just like, "Oh, are you like that's not a violin?" You're like, "Nope." And they're like, "Okay." Wait. So to be clear, me, yeah, yeah a student in band was very cool. Cooler. Oh. No. Cooler. cooler. Oh, Listen, got it. It was got the hierarchy is band, yeah, orchestra, then chorus. Wow. At least in my not in my school. Really? Chorus was, was chorus? Higher. Really? Yep. And we didn't have an orchestra? Ooh. Wow. Whoa. Rough. Is that true? Yeah, we didn't. Tweet I mean, at us, Los Santos High School graduates. Ooh. <laughs> Did we have an orchestra? Maybe the orchestra was just so uncool that you didn't even know yeah, it existed. Geez. Wow. Or underfunded. Didn't even know its name. I suppose the orchestra in St. Louis Park was in the basement. <laughs> yeah, we were also. Sorry, orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's anyway, trumpets for life. And with that, we are going to press pause or the space bar. Uh, go uh, eat two pizzas and two salads, some of us more than others. Uh, and wow. uh, we're going to watch uh, It's a Wonderful Life. We'll be right back. And we're back. We just watched two hours and ten minutes of the holiday classic It's a Wonderful Life. Which was, in fact, pretty wonderful. Life. And it was about life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go through just a quick synopsis of what happened in this movie. Mm-hmm. And then you can feel free to correct me as I go. Okay. It starts out, surprisingly enough, uh, on the <laughs> celestial heavens. Oh, boy. oh yeah. yeah. Where God, Joseph, and Clarence, the name of the angel, 
That, is it God? I thought it was, was just God? all angels. I thought it was Joseph, mm. something, and then Clarence. Well, anyway, three celestial beings. Yeah. <laughs> three what, celestial beings walk into a bar. Um, and they sort of set up the background that there is this man, George Bailey, who's in trouble. And Clarence, uh, the angel, is super eager to get started, but they're like, no, you need to hear about his life. So they recap his life, which turns out to be a significant portion of the movie. Uh, we yeah. learn a lot. We see him save his brother's life. We see him uh, prevent the accidental poisoning of a child. Uh, we see him meet his future wife, um, make some choices that are pretty good, and some choices that part of me was like, okay, well, I guess yeah. it works for that time period. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, his largest goal is to get out of Bedford Falls and to... Um, uh, basically to travel the world and go to college. And he has these big dreams, um, but then things keep stopping him. Again and again, he's stopped by a sense of obligation to the people of Bedford Falls, specifically through the Bailey Bank and Loan. Buildings and Loan. Ba buildings and Loan. Yeah. Uh, Bailey's and in Loan, am I right? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Yeah, like Bill Bailey and Bailey. Like Bailey's. And anyway, so he, um, no, it's <laughs> fine. A tough crowd out there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Did you just have to stop yourself from doing a weird little riff? Yeah, what do you think this is? Bedford Falls. Hey. 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 We'll get to that. Okay, so he just wants to get out, but he keeps getting stopped mm -hmm. uh, by circumstance. Puts off his own college uh, in favor of his brother. Ends up getting married, uh, making a home and a life. Things go very badly. Uh, things go well. Sorry. Things go well for a so while. Well. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't have a lot of money, and that's a source of frustration. Um, but that's less of a frustration than when he almost has to close Bailey Savings and Loan. Buildings and Loan. <laughs> Buildings and Loan. <laughs> um, because his very sweet but... Um, Incompetent. Incompetent. <laughs> Uncle and, has... And drunk. And drunk. Yeah, uh, but also, like, apparently, like, never stopping mourning his loss of his wife. Oh. They just threw oh. that in at one point. Ooh. God, that was just like... There's there just a few times where it's just a dagger to the heart. Yeah. out of nowhere. Um, anyway, he misplaces $8,000 into the hands of an evil capitalist, Mr. <laughs> Potter. And um, <laughs> through that error, um, George Bailey becomes so desperate that he's ready to kill himself. And is at that moment for that, life insurance for yeah. life insurance because yeah. he can make fifteen thousand um, dollars. At that point, becomes a part of the movie that all of us remember, <laughs> <laughs> um, which is when he looks back on his life as if he had never been born at all, and then he comes to the realization: Ah, it is a wonderful life. It is a wonderful life, and does he Mary ever say that he Clarence does. It. Clarence, yeah, the angel Almost. does. Oh, I mean, he says he paraphrases. Life really does wonderful. He says he says something wonderful like, to be alive. He, "He says something like, I guess you do have a wonderful life.' Oh. He doesn't say it's a wonderful. I guess life. your life is very good. Yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. He um, says, he says wonderful. Life. <laughs> and I just want to make it clear that um, he does actually say wonderful. Life. And then the scene that everyone in the world is seeing. Yes. Where his friends and neighbors come to his DVDs. aid, DVDs. and they sing "Odd Lang Syne," and his little girl Zuzu of Zuzu's Petals <laughs> um, <laughs> says, "Daddy." Uh, they say whenever, anyway, the bell, and then you get your wings. Yep. And it's a sweet and treasured moment. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah. That's what happens. Good. I remembered none of that until the part where he was on the bridge. Yeah, yeah. you were like, at a certain point, you were convinced you had never seen this movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? I missed Seriously. that. Seriously. Yeah. No, yeah. I was deeply concerned. I've only seen the very end. Great. But I have to say, Dan, you came very close. Your oh, predictions yeah. were yeah. great. Here's what I predicted as having never seen the movie. It would be in black and white. Yep. Nailed it. Done. Jimmy Stewart's in it. Ooh. Semi nailed it. Credit He's as? in it. Credit is James Stewart. That's right. Mm -hmm. Did that change? Am I, I don't wrong know. that he? I honestly don't know how much of that is just pop no, I think culture. He went by Jimmy Stewart, but his professional name was James. Yeah, Stewart. Oh. always. I think he's always credited as like James. He's Stewart. credited as James mm -hmm. Stewart. Yeah, but he's kind of known. Because I'm as thinking, Jimmy um, Vertigo. Yeah, he's James. It's definitely Stewart James that. Stewart. In he's that. James Stewart, and I think he's James Stewart in Rear Window too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe he was. It's so like uh, what's his name? Robert uh, De Niro. Yes. What? I feel like people call him Bobby. Yeah, call Bob. yeah, but not yeah. like normals. Yeah, it's yeah. Right. Well, it was a different time. I I mean, if you met him, you'd be like, "Hey, Bobby De Niro." He'd be like, "Who the fuck it's are you?" Like right? You says... talking to me? Oh yeah. Do you think he does that? And then he goes, "No, I'm just kidding. I'm an old man. I'm fine. You're fine." <laughs> fuck Trump. Hey, meet hey. the fuckers. Hey, meet hey, the fuckers. Three this? coming out. What? Um, he wants to commit suicide. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a angel. Yep. Yep. Clarence. I don't know what that other word is. 
Because it's so sweet. Uh, Does that say orphan? Oh, that's orphan boys down here. <laughs> what orphan boy? I bet there would be an orphan boy that helps him out. Oh, no. No, no, no orphans all. in sight. Um, sunglasses? I should have written this clearer. <laughs> Sunglasses. Uh, oh, he's a salesman. Oh, he's a salesman right. who's selling rotary <laughs> phones. Right. You thought he was a rotary phone. He's a to rotary sales. Not at all. Did not nail Although it. Although phones cool. did have a very prominent sure. role in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. They moved the plot along. Yeah. Lots of ringing and wings mm-hmm. as general mm-hmm. themes. And yelling. Mm. Yeah. Real. Oh, and then uh, I I had a large bet of what the evil capitalist would look like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Top hat? Mm. No. Uh, it was a pretty tall one point bowler. He had like a yeah. He had like a decently heighted hat at one point. I mean, there's no Abraham Lincoln. I mean, if you want to yeah. give it to me, I'll take it. But you here's can the have thing: it. Uh, the same friend who might tweet at us about shoes, mm. if I send them a frame from the movie, they will tell us what hat that is. Okay. I think Great. it's just a bowler. I have no idea. But I feel like you got the essence. Yeah. Did I? I mean, no, Best. no mustache, mm. no. no twirling of the mustache, no. obviously. I don't think we ever saw his shoes. Mm. He is in a wheelchair. But in like right? the most ornate wheelchair ever made. Yeah. yeah, it was like a gorgeous throne. chair. It was like a throne. Yep, that was pushed by a male servant man. Ooh, did he ever talk? No, he, he just creepily like, stood oh, he behind was, him. He was right? for sure a monster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, Beth, you said he looked like Lurch, right? Yeah, he looked exactly like Lurch. Do you think Lurch. he was like summoned? Like he conjured him? Do you oh. Because he's the devil? Or he like made certain deals. Mm. Just got oh. like a, um, he got in early on like the... Nazi labs, the occult what? labs. Oh, yeah, making you think he like bankrolled, he monsters? bankrolled some occult Nazi labs so he could get wow. one Frankenstein for himself. And yeah. What was that skull for on his desk? Right. right? It's like a lighter, maybe. I we don't think know. So, but also like, why? Oh, we weird. should say that Very Mr. Creepy. Potter was played by Lionel Barrymore. Mm-hmm. Great uncle of E.T.'s Drew Barrymore. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And then probably other relation of other famous Barrymore that she's related to. Mm-hmm. I cannot remember his first name. Jeff. Sorry, theater heads. <laughs> John? It might be John. I think John is correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Anyway, but he was wearing a cool hat. At one point. But he didn't mm-hmm. have a monocle. He did have glasses. He, he definitely a, was wearing a vest. Like the whole yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, vest is kind of the only one. Mm-hmm. Maybe top hat. A little rotund. Yeah. Or no, Beth said rotund. Yes. Yeah, I thought thin. Mm. Oh. You know, like a reedy yeah. like goblin Crispin man. Like Glover. Yes. Or like mm-hmm. that spooky... Uh, Would watch Crispin uh, Glover in that role. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah. any role. <laughs> I felt like delight. he was very um, much like Dick Cheney. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Agree. Ooh, like, I bet he had a man-sized like safe. Like weirdly so, now that you've said that yeah. out loud. Yeah. Wow. Probably mm-hmm. shot someone in the face. Oh. He was very <laughs> influential. <laughs> Absolutely. At some point in his youth, shot someone in the face oh and probably God. stole their fortune yep. and used it to start his own. Wow. Yeah. Seed money. Just mm-hmm. like he stole at $8,000. Yeah. Yep. I also yep. just want to mention, it was Donna Reed who played Mary. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, it was killing me that I couldn't remember her name. Anyway. Yeah. What sorry, was the what other thing we were ashamed of? Oh, Frank Capra directed this yes. movie. Yes. Oh, <laughs> sorry, everybody. Do we? Is that a known? Yeah. Yeah. He's, kind of, he's kind of a deal. Yeah. He's a deal. A deal. Anyway, uh, I bet this came out in 1958. Uh-huh. <laughs> it did not. No. Um, it came out in 1946, which was Molly's third and final bet. Yeah. Yeah, I was wrong. I, it was post World War II because it is in the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my theory is that it didn't do well because people were tired of seeing people, or they're just tired of hearing about the depression and the downtrodden state mm-hmm. of American citizens. Yeah, it's just like I can't watch Man in High Castle right now, mm-hmm. or Handmaid's Tale. Mm-hmm. I'm just not until things are better. Is it? It didn't really seem to be about the depression to me. Like the run wasn't caused by the Great Depression, wasn't it? Wasn't it just like didn't Mr. Potter like rescind the loan, like call in the loan for the buildings and loan place well, to trigger it? He, and he but, owned the bank. Yeah, but people were already making a run on the bank. He bought the bank when they were making a run on it. So I assume that was during the depression. Right? <laughs> or at least like the local depression for the town of Bedford Falls. Oh, yeah. yeah. I also decked New York City. That's what that is. Yeah. NYC, New York City. Oh. Well, there was, it was upstate New York. Is was it? it? I'm pretty sure Bedford Falls is upstate New York. Oh, All it's the a real other place? towns, they. Well, oh, yeah. They talk town. about Rochester. They and talk like, about yeah, Elmira. Yeah, 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 and they yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. going yeah. to New York. You're right, that's you're like right, the. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yep. That's at least the nearest big city that yes. they'd be going to. Yeah. I don't know. 
in, if, in any case, something happened to the bank, and then Mr. Potter used that crisis to buy the bank. Yeah. And then used that crisis to try to leverage old George Bailey yeah. from... And, and my larger point is, it was about financial hardship. Yes. We'll People talk about that. Yeah. Follow up on financial hardship and austerity. Yeah. Yeah. But we see, we see a lot... Most of this movie is his life, mm -hmm. right? As I think we talked about, everybody remembers the, I'm going to kill myself, but actually it's fine. <laughs> yep. it's not yeah. fine but like you're it's better with you but yeah. that's like the last that's like the last hot 20 or whatever yeah. yeah i really thought that the like i thought that was the majority of the movie like a hot 40 yeah i thought it like was like here's his life real fast okay now here's yeah. that part but it yeah it doesn't get there until that's like the end of the movie yeah yeah and so we see a big chunk of that is the romance between george and mary mm. who who are in love yes, and build a family together. Yes. Oh. But again, Molly, I don't know if you want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, again, a movie has the first kiss as essentially date rape, mm. right? There, there Is that what you were reacting very, to? We talked about the very uh, beginning. Yeah. So Mary clearly has a crush on <laughs> George. Yes. Like from the very from beginning. She go, from a young age, she goes and hangs out with him at the store where he's working when he's 12. Yeah, we'll talk about okay. that too. <laughs> she asks for chocolate ice cream, yep. and he says, you got coconut on it. And she says, no. And he's like, why not, you idiot? And then he launches into how he's going to travel the world. Right. And the whole time, he's just pouring coconut on top of her <laughs> chocolate scoop mm -hmm, of ice mm -hmm. cream. And it never gets addressed because some other tragedy happens. But that's like <laughs> the big, <laughs> that's the very first thing. And there are charming moments, but there are a lot of moments where George is an absolute tool. Yes. Which I think is useful for the story, yes. so that when he gets turns into a major tool at the end, right? We have some basis. He hasn't been awesome the whole time, but she, her, man, she should have kicked him out of her house. Yeah, it's one of those things where like he is a complex like multi-dimensional character which is great and like he clearly has unresolved emotional problems which is like kind of the whole point of the movie mm. right like the whole first chunk of that movie like as much as we're learning about like how he grew up like every major milestone in his life is one more thing like kicking him down until he has his like existential crisis <laughs> montage <laughs> on christmas eve or whatever um but yeah, you can tell it's very much a movie of that time where it's mm -hmm. like, well, she's just the love interest. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. she's always she's always just sort of presented as like a more of just like a sounding board for George's story. I mean, she has some moments of agency, but, but he's not depicted as um, an incompetent suitor. No, he's depicted as kind of a horse ass. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. is like when he comes over to her house and he's pretty rude to her and yes. then he falls in love with her to your point dan yeah they just phone they, call they have like a hot phone call listen with another dude listen okay gets them all hot and bothered that yeah. they're learning about sam wainwright right i don't Doing think plastics. that's what's getting them hot and bothered no, i think it's the, the physical, close, the physical connection okay and the mother screaming down yeah. from the staircase yeah. but then he just he takes her and just shakes the shit out of her and then forcibly kisses it. Yeah, it's sh just I. You see it a lot no, in I know, movies. I know. We talked about it in Star Wars. Han Solo. In. It happens big time in Rocky. Yep. Just. Yeah. I mean, I know this was forty six. I don't want to yell it at a movie from a thousand years ago. Yeah, but like, well. don't uh, shake women and then force them to kiss you to make them fall in love with you. Right. For sure. Although Teens, in this cool case, it. he wasn't like force. Like this was a. I agree with everything you've said. It's yeah. very frustrating. But in this case. It seemed like the shaking and the anger came out of he knew that once he fell in love with her, he was stuck in town and he didn't right. want to go into plastics and he didn't yeah. want to stay there. It was like the one last thing keeping him yeah. there. Yeah. But it's still not cool. It's not cool to do that. No. Yeah. yeah. What's your motivation? Right. Is. It's like Agreed. he. <laughs> it's like all of the things he is feeling are valid, but because it's a movie, it was unfortunate that he had to express them to us the audience in some problematic ways yeah. right instead of him just being like i don't know dear diary yeah. boy i love mary <laughs> but gosh like i know as soon as we get together i'm never gonna leave this dumb old town instead he had to have like kind of a breakdown yeah. <laughs> right in front of her but can't he yeah. just like uh, i don't know smash up some stuff <sighs> i don't know yeah but also like you gotta remember this is 19 what wait when did they get married after the war uh before the war before the war mm-hmm I have a question about this, yep. actually. Do you think, okay, 
Oh, yeah. Recently, okay. it occurred to me that not everything in a movie is a stage direction. Like, actors mm. make choices sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, in order to portray certain emotions and things like that. Do you think that was a choice that Jimmy Stewart made to shake her, to show anger toward her? Or do you think that that was something that was in was directed? Thank Frank Capra. I am gonna. S- I'm guessing that the basis of it, at least, was a stage direction, because I feel like it is a very like this is how you express yourself on film things. Where it's like mm-hmm. you grab her by the shoulders. Like, Show, don't like, tell. Yeah. So maybe yeah. he like got too into it, and it just seemed like <laughs> really intense. Yeah. But I mean, because part of that too is that he's pulling her closer to him. Right. I don't know. Anyway, I just feel like, especially in older movies, like that is like a common physical reaction when you are being emotionally sprought is mm-hmm. to grab the other person you're talking to. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah, it's like, and I don't think that's just what every actor would do. Like it wasn't <laughs> naturally. Yeah, it wasn't like. That's why I guess it seems it seems more like that kind of a device mm-hmm. versus like he was shaking a woman. I don't know how to describe. I mean, he that, was. You know. But yes. Yeah. I don't know how else to no. describe that, but I, that's just, I was like thinking about that and how that just seems like a very specific acting choice that you see over and over right. and over again. It doesn't matter what the gender of the other yes. person is. It's usually a woman. But it's still <laughs> awful. Yes. Yeah, it's still awful. Oh, yeah. if you've seen Elvis Presley kiss a girl in any movie, what? that is terrifying. Is Gross. Because, well, you know, they just, yeah, it and was just, just super like it. grab, smash, oh, and yeah. move your head back and forth. <laughs> Um, we'll grab and so smash. it's not like a very <laughs> we'll grab and smash. <laughs> uh, so it's not like super realistic. Right. But yeah. I remember even as a kid watching um, those Elvis movies on broadcast television and thinking, this is not only horrible, but I hope there was no one during that time that thought this is how you kiss somebody. Oh yeah, yeah there definitely were. Ugh. Oh yeah. I mean this is p- part of a tapestry of the way we teach boys yep. to romance their partners yep. i w- i feel like in the rest of the movie their kisses were very sweet and consensual mm-hmm. right yeah um but yeah i suppose like it that's like that's how you show passion <laughs> yeah it was i mean again i feel like it was like they were trying to tell you a lot about george bailey in one scene and it was just unfortunate that that scene also involved like the moment where another human being Mm -hmm. was going to be placed into a relationship that affected the rest of her life. (laughs) Yeah. 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 This is such a tool leading up to that. Also, her mom, what's the deal? Oh, Mrs. Hatch? Mrs. Hatch was ridiculous. She was correct, though, because if her daughter had married Sam Wainwright, she'd be so rich. She was right, but she had so much to say until he physically attacked her daughter, and then she she just ran away. Like, she didn't say... Yeah, it's like, at that point, you really get down there (laughs) because your daughter's in, like, like, immediate danger. Of getting married. Uh, (laughs) The biggest danger. Danger of all. Yes. Honestly, like you, really want, you really wanted to saddle Mary with hee haw. No, yeah, I, I Sam Wainwright seems like a madman type of dude that's got an apartment in the city, Ooh, little, sleeping around. Yeah, yeah, for, sure. Well, for sure. Her. Right. I mean, even right? in the scene, making soybean plastic. Even in the scene you know, where he's it, calling Mary, yeah, he's they got cut a lady to him, him like with some like floozy behind him. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. So what floozy? Although if George know. Bailey is violent. <laughs> <laughs> the horrifying fate that Mary uh, falls into is that she's a librarian. That a shouldn't be so old bad. Old maid, Molly. Oh. Yeah, she's wearing glasses, also, Molly. <laughs> let's yeah. take a moment to yeah. appreciate Hideous. that when George and Mary first start courting, Mary is 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if they have had four kids and the war has already happened before everything went to shit, she's like, what, 30 at the oldest? <laughs> Yeah. So now she's an old maid. Yeah. When he's not born by like thirty. Also, she her eyes were worse off because oh she yeah, that's right. she wore glasses. Well, because she worked in a library. <laughs> back. Oh, that's true. Eyes that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, she never found out how much she loved coconut on her chocolate right. ice cream. Yeah. yeah it's Still her fault for having that. chocolate. Oh, instead of vanilla. Hashtag all my Hashtag all my fans. Fans. Um, but let's for the regardless of like the problematic elements of their relationship, she was great. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Donna Reed was super great in this movie. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Struck the perfect tone. Also, she saves the day. Right? Mm-hmm. She's the hero of the movie. Yeah. George Bailey's just running around thinking about throwing just himself off a of bridge. Sad sack. <laughs> Not to minimize yeah. that. Um <laughs> but while he's doing that, she's running around 
person to person being like, remember when we helped you out now it's, Hey, we also need help. And like, yeah gets all the money yeah. like probably more than eight thousand also mm-hmm. i mean they get twenty five thousand yeah. from sam yeah but like she does the work when shit goes down and she's got four kids at home too mm-hmm. and <sighs> people come who over she just party. leaves yeah. by themselves uh, oh, there's like a bank examiner and some cops there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> waiting to arrest their dad bank <laughs> <laughs> she, you know it was a different time <laughs> That one kid was probably like six. Kid with the banking examiner and police <laughs> officer. I mean, she probably. I'm gonna guess she probably just like tracked down like Ernie the cabbie and then just sent him off to do all the networking, mm-hmm. maybe. Or maybe she was like, drive me around so this is faster. All my kids are in bed, but they're definitely gonna wake up when that weird bank man arrests yeah. their father. Their father. Yep. Yeah, she. I don't know. I fair a lot of points in this movie. I very much felt like. You were saying, Molly, how like, ooh, George is a real tool. Mm -hmm. But then also like with the eyes of the harsh eyes of 2018, it's also like, man, George has a lot of like unresolved mental issues. Yeah. And I felt bad for him, Mm -hmm. like as much as he was being a tool. But then also to your point, Dan, here we have Mary, his wife, who is now burdened with double the emotional labor at the end Mm -hmm. to deal with both his issues and their collective issues well and she saved the day during the first bank run oh, when she right. they had oh, saved yeah. a thousand dollars for their own honeymoon yeah and she yeah. gives it away to save she's the bank best. she's incredible she's and the then best. she he doesn't makes deserve her hey. out of a like dilapidated old terrible oh, place by calling on community was very cute uh, yeah i think the i think i mean they made that movie that way because her okay they set it up like his wish is to leave the town right when they are throwing they throw rocks through glass windows in order to make wishes yes. as you do yep and <laughs> as everybody knows yeah <laughs> he wishes to travel the world mm-hmm. correct and live his life and then she wishes and will not tell him her wish but she wished that he would stay in town and do all the things that they do she right. had more powerful Which, wishes that's yes better wisher <laughs> she's a better wisher <laughs> But, like, the movie is set up that that is the correct choice th- to make. Yes. The correct choice to make is to stay in your hometown, make it better, mm-hmm. get married, have children, and mm-hmm. you'll be a happy man. Yeah. I mean, let's remember this is right after World War II, and that absolutely was the message of the United <laughs> States of America. Yeah. Go home, have kids, bring the economy back. Let's do this, baby. Yeah. <laughs> USA number five. USA. Don't talk about all the stuff that's happened to you. Oh, yeah. Never, or what you've given yeah. up. Never talk about what you did over in the theater of war. Mm-hmm. Never concern yourself with the joys of travel that you have learned in your travels during the war. Mm-hmm. Uh, save your family's business. Get a dog. Get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Microwave uh, dinners. Uh, yeah. Uh, Vacuum. Buy, buy houses. Buy houses. Anyway, money, sorry. money, money. You were saying, Beth? <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is that, like, she's the hero of this movie, but I feel like th- that is also on purpose, that mm-hmm. they're like, look, the women are right. Stay right. at home. Yeah. That's, I don't know. The it joy just is seems a family like, or yeah, whatever. An interesting message mm-hmm. to be. His kids are real cute, though. Yeah. Oh, my they're God. Those cute. kids are so cute. The, well, the youngest that just follows them around while he's freaking out, oh, just saying, excuse me, yes. and pulling yes. on his coat. So good. And then finally... Guess what? Yeah, he's like I burped. Oh, <laughs> solid kid joke. Yeah, solid kid Maybe joke laugh. right there. Maybe laugh. Yep. Speaking of jokes, yes, there were way more jokes in the movie than I thought there would yeah. be, mm-hmm. and also so many like cartoonish double takes. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. There was some stuff that uh, bordered on vaudeville, and yep. I mean in a delightful way. Ooh. I had the best time. That hat work was oh, incredible. Hat work was so good. <gasps> yeah. Mm-hmm. There were layers upon layers of hat work. Mm, good hat work all around. I think my favorite guy that was doing that hat work or just vaudeville oh, stuff. Oh, vaudeville stuff was uh, the bridge master. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's my MVP. Oh of my God. Movie. Yeah. When we first meet Clarence, the angel and he's like talking about how he's an angel, yep. like not, not doing anything nope. supernatural. Nope. Basically looks like a crazy person. Just, just, casually, just, talking. just casually talking about yeah. how he's an angel. That guy who runs the drawbridge or whatever. He's got like a, he's got one of those little yeah. coiny things. I guess he collects so tolls like toll to get out of town. Anyway, yeah. and he's got his spittoon. Yes. But just these slow double takes of like <laughs> going to for the spittoon. Yep. Angel says something crazy. 
<laughs> and then finally when it's like fully revealed he's an angel he like just, falls just, out of his chair yeah, hopples over amazing. and then like runs out of the thing while staring through the window the whole so time like good. a crab like oh, just walking sideways so good where is he going i don't know like, it's where, snowing what is, it's i think Christmas he just ran on and jumped off the bridge no man <laughs> then he's like another angel yeah, That's the sequel. Vicious but cycle. It's crazy world seen. I live in. <laughs> it's a wonderful life too. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. And weirdly, it was more. <laughs> it's more subtle, but yet it's just as big as what you're describing. But it's just so well done. I don't know how to explain it. It's not like whoa, whoa, what? No, until it's he falls like out of the a, chair. Whoa, whoa, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's very artful. Yeah, like it's so deliberate the way he like leans over to spit and mm-hmm. then kind of like comes back like wait a minute. I believe that man went to clown school. It was yeah. Really Ooh, there well was done. also. Uh, there was also that great Looney Tunes moment where Uncle Billy is all drunk at the Christmas party. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, you gotta go home or whatever," and he like George sends him off home. And then a few <laughs> seconds after walking in frame, there's just a large <laughs> clattering sound. It goes on forever, and he's just like, ah, "I'm all right." <laughs> it's it sounds like somebody dropped a hundred vases. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it so much. Yeah. I was so I was actually disappointed when Ma Bailey did the same thing to George. It was like, "Oh, mm-hmm. go call on that Mary, whatever." And they made the same joke where he's like, oh, it's pointing me in the direction or whatever. And he walks off frame in the other direction. I was like, please, please, please make the same noise. That would be so good. But no. It didn't. He did not do that. Missed opportunity. Missed mm-hmm. opportunity. Uh, We all got the angel's name wrong, right? Didn't we all bet on a name? Oh, yeah. We did all bet on the name. It was Clarence. Uh, Molly, you bet Arnold. Hmm? Dan Norman. Hmm? Beth. Kraft. <laughs> and I bet Lear. <laughs> I guess Molly was closest. I don't. I don't. You cannot give me a win for that. I don't That's know. I, he reminded me of Olaf from Frozen. Okay. He just had this sweetness about him. I really enjoyed Clarence. Yeah. What I, I liked him too. What I find, found a little confusing was that he seemed. You would expect an angel to be coming down, to save the person that they're supposed to save. Right. But he very much reminded us at every turn that he was doing this to get his wings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like he was very selfish. He wasn't mean about it. <laughs> yeah. Like he was like helping, but he was like, I need to help you so I can get my wings. Yeah. But I mean, does he have like a broader context of like, that's not actually so bad. Right. Like, you know? Yeah. You Although they do. Go to I angel mean, school or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Angel second class. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just fell out of my chair. What? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, he but, doesn't advocate for the afterlife. He also does remark that it's that George Bailey won't get into heaven if he kills himself. Correct. That's true. Um, they don't harp on it. That's true. Yeah, I, yeah, and I I found it interesting watching this movie because I enjoyed the first half so much, mm-hmm. probably because it was all brand new to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I really enjoyed it, and then when it switched over, I felt frustrated with how dense George Bailey was. Mm-hmm. I was like, just accept it. Just get it that you weren't born. Oh, yeah. And, and I understand you've been drinking, too, and well, a and, lot to And it's like the in. most insane existential yeah. crisis to ever be presented to yourself. No, and I was like, am I impatient because I've seen this construct many times sure. in my life, and this was just one of the first? Or was I just impatient because I just was like, just go see all the things. Mm-hmm. Make your choice and go back. I don't know. Yeah, it was like, how many things do you have to see before you believe something is happening? Right. But he kept on thinking, like, are you a hypnotist? Yeah. Oh, and I I do want to add, though, even though I made the defense about, like, the existential um, context for, like, why he may not be that upset about saving George, um, I did think it was many too many references. Like, at no point was I like, I'm going to forget about this wing situation. <laughs> yeah. like, they underscored it many, many, many times. Yeah. I mean... They did specifically say at the beginning of the movie when the like galaxies were talking to each other. Oh, that and their prayers. Clarence too? is like the most simple but sweetest angel in the universe, yep. or whatever. So yeah. I guess he that just keeps talking about it because that's like that is like his one, like motivating thing. And yeah. Tom Sawyer, the novel Tom Sawyer. Yeah. Aww. Well. Yeah. He was a lovable goof. He was a lovable goof, though. I did really like how. Uh, I just liked how, like, yeah, I just liked how aloof he was about being out in the world. Mm. And, like, he didn't at any point consider, like, that he would confuse people. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, he was always just seemed like 
he seemed surprised when people were surprised by what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. This is adorable. Yeah, I mean, he that was a weird moment in the bar where he's like, well, he doesn't believe in angels? Yeah. <laughs> Why is he so surprised to see one if he believes in angels? Mm. That was... And then also like acted like he was in like an old like medieval tavern at one point. Oh yeah. What? He was like he ordered like mulled wine and then was oh, like, yeah. go on, lad, or whatever. And then the best bartender in the world. Yeah. Oh, it's me, Nick. I run the bar now in <laughs> yeah. weird future world. Yeah. Oh. Which is also like, like it takes him to George Bailey doesn't exist world, mm-hmm. which is Pottersville, which is also kind of like Back to the Future, two. Two. Yep. When they go to like Biff world. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's basically the same yeah. Yeah. story. It's like, what if the money man ran everything? Yep. And Is it's the just... plot of Back to the Future 2 based off of It's a Wonderful I Life? I mean, probably. I mean, they probably like were like, what if we just did It's a Wonderful Life? What if Mr. Potter were just straight up Trump? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just strip clubs as far as the eye could see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh Which God. is true in this Pottersville movie. Pottersville was yeah. so funny. Where it was like, <laughs> like it'd be one thing if it was like, oh, look, there's all these like lascivious establishments now in town because it's yeah. not like, because Potter just let it, you know, let the vice lords take over. But it was like literally every building, right? <laughs> yeah. It was either a bar or a strip club. Or both. Yeah. Girls, girls, girls. Yeah. Like yeah. every building. It was amazing yeah, yeah. There's, there's still a library but i guess no one was there yeah, yeah. that's probably oh that's why so she was she, so alone that's why she never met another man because yeah. no one ever came by they're too busy <laughs> at those strip joints or They're at nick's at seeing violet yes mm-hmm. that was interesting because violet actually was making money doing what she was doing in the other realm right hmm? in like, the potter's world yeah mm. like she was working I didn't she understand what they were trying to say. Girl? She was a working was girl. She was a dancer, I, I would assume, so, yeah. or a performer yeah. of some sorts. Wait, in the... In Potter's world. Pottersville. Pottersville or whatever. Yeah. Um, She's also getting kicked out of that place. Yeah, I don't really know what the deal was well, there. She, but I, I'm yeah. just trying to figure out, like, what... So, like, how George Bailey affected her life. I guess he was giving her money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To try I, and get to New York. Yeah. yeah I think they she were... She was going to be in show business? Yeah. Or something. Okay. I think they were trying to suggest like, oh, Violet is kind of a reckless lady from at least 1940s standards. Mm-hmm. And George is support of her, both mm-hmm. like em, like just emotionally as a friend. And, and then just judge financially her. not judging her. Uh, has kind of kept her on like at least a reasonably... Uh, righteous path yeah. but without George she's just like a crazy drunk floozy yeah. lady also right. yeah the building and loans keeps the town nicer yeah and free of establishments Rampant capitalism should we just yeah. shoot do we want to get into Potter and everything he represents oh yeah so he's <laughs> the richest man in town yeah and yep. the most like blunt capitalist yeah. in the history of the world <laughs> owns everything doesn't care about anyone no yeah, and wants to own everything. They're, yes. Yeah. He wants a monopoly because he is a monopoly man. He is mm-hmm. the monopoly man. Yeah. Without the monocle, right? Oh, yeah. Does yeah. monopoly like the, man have a monocle? I think yes. so. Or is Uncle that Mr. Money Peanut? Man? That's <laughs> Mr. Peanut. <Ooh. laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is kind of like if the monopoly man and Mr. Peanut like they, merged monopoly together. Man definitely has a monocle. Does he? Ooh. I feel like that might be you know a what? Mandela effect. I think it is a Mandela Does he have glasses? Effect. Like really? little pince-nez yeah. or something? No, I think he's just... 2020 vision? 2020, baby. Right. Wow. So he can count all the bills. Mm. Wait, how is he... His eyes didn't go bad after reading all the money signs? <laughs> 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 all the strain of yeah. counting money? Um, Parker Brothers? Hasbro? I think it's Parker Brothers. Doesn't matter. But yeah, he is like... Uh, he is like the 1940s version of like Gordon Gecko. <laughs> where he's just like, I'm just going to tell you exactly what I think and how I feel about money and the joys of greed <laughs> and capitalism. Where he basically like shit talks George's dad for like being nice. Yeah. Basically, when he dies and they're going to like, the board is going to vote to like just completely dissolve the billions alone. Like his, Mr. Potter's whole argument is basically like he was a, he was an idiot because he was so nice to these people instead of making money. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. Yeah, that that scene was especially sad because James James Stewart yes. <laughs> was you. wearing a black band around his oh. arm, which means like that his dad died three months. They said three months, and he's still mm-hmm. wearing that. Hey man, I don't know. How long do you wear one of those? 
Some people up to a year. I don't know. Yes. Really? Hundred days. I mean, I guess like you mourn people that you lose forever. I mean, I'm but not like... really clear. Like, if is that a specific religious thing, or is that just like a cultural thing that has fallen out of favor? I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, know but either. I think women wear black for like a year. Mm. They're widowed or they lose a parent. Sure. I don't know where I got that. Right. Wow. Probably reading novels. I sure. don't know. <laughs> Careful of your eyes, Molly. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're married. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can put your hair up now. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and read. <laughs> 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 sad though because my eyes are going oh, and i no. do have reading glasses i never used to have them okay he like takes i mean he he genuinely takes joy in like destroying the rest of the town yeah and he's like explicitly a slum lord like yes. they refer to his properties as slums and he does not correct them at yeah. any point yeah and he like gets mad at bailey park or whatever it's called the yep. housing project that george builds yeah i think it's bailey park bailey park He's yeah. He's just kind of like he's mostly just upset because it's just getting successful enough where enough people have left his slums. Oh yeah, which is another MVP, the uh, the rent collector guy yeah. mm-hmm. who just keeps telling him it's no skin off his nose, but then like <laughs> very into showing the plans like, about how hello, well I have built this presentation. Daily Park for is him. going. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he like, had he... a mustache and was thin. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, for sure. <laughs> I'm <laughs> okay. No, like I'm on board with that. Yeah. All right. And his, I love how, uh, I just love how like overt the set of his office was too. Like just to be clear, like this is a bad man. Mm-hmm. He had a giant portrait of himself. Yeah. Yep. He had a giant bust of Napoleon Bonaparte, who I noticed <laughs> when I wrote this down, like I loved it so much. Like when George was finally in dire straits and was like desperately asking Mr. Potter to uh, float him some money so he could save the building to loan. Yeah. The bust of Napoleon is designed as such where it is literally glaring down <laughs> at whoever's sitting in that chair. Yeah, and oh, he's got like a, amazing. like a sunk chair so yeah. anybody who sits oh. his decks is like, <laughs> like below status. him. And yeah. like that was some good comedy. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. as we mentioned, he has his like mute Frankenstein monster who mm-hmm. I assume is trained to kill. Right? Probably. Like he will murder a man his on his order. Lover? What? Like, what was this man's life? Like, he didn't have any. He p- pushed family. him around. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. He just wanted to make money, stack that cash. Mm-hmm. You think yeah. so? Just mm-hmm. like a bodyguard slash put your hand on the back of my throne chair. Yeah. But he's like yeah. the closest relationship he has. Yeah, I think so, though, right? Rough. Probably. Maybe it's his best friend from childhood. That he like cut like his, his tongue entourage? out. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I'll pay you a thousand dollars if you cut your tongue oh out. Oh my yeah. god! Oh, you're mine now, yeah. Lurch. Yeah. Wow. It's probably true. Well, it, he was creepy. Anyway, he. I kind of. I don't know. I. I'm always delighted by like overtly evil capitalists in movies where like there's no, like they just really want to make sure you understand like no no, this guy's bad at like. Capitalism number one for sure. Yeah, but this guy is bad. Mm-hmm. But also maybe not. That's what was weird with this movie. Like it actually seemed like maybe it was not saying capitalism number one. Yeah, at the it end. seemed against it. Um, I it's reminded me of something I just started reading about, so I can't speak to it with any education. Here we go. But the idea of the gift economy, uh-huh. uh, which is like instead of hoarding all your money, like you are always trying to give it away. Mm-hmm. Uh, with then the idea being that whenever you need help, someone will be giving their money away back to you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we can all help each other out and it works better yeah. Yeah. instead of just like hoarding away our beeps and boops. Yeah. I, uh, and this movie was like a, an example of that. Yeah. Like George Bailey had spent his life giving away money, like gives away his own honeymoon money and like the building and loan is not very profitable. They're always giving more than they should. And in the end it comes back back to him when he needs it Mm -hmm. yeah although i i felt like it was more about the idea of the community building each other up right Mm -hmm. because they were he has this awesome speech when they make that first run on the bank where he's basically like you have invested in your neighbor's house all of you are investors and to me like i understand about the capitalism or capitalism bad but i also feel like we've just lost 
so much of what our ideas about our obligation to community is. Mm -hmm. And even if you think about, like, if you could think about taxes as an investment instead of a penalty, Mm -hmm. like that kind of, like, it feels like in this movie anyway, which is based on a book, which is based on like one person's idea, right? So I I can't really attribute it to it. Is it based on a book? I thought so. Oh. I thought Uh, I saw that in the title slides. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, beautiful title screens, by the way. Oh, really, yeah. mm-hmm. really sweet. Um, and just pieces of paper, like mm-hmm. beautifully ornate paper that they just shuffled through. Mm-hmm. Very efficient. Great. Anyway. Right through it. <laughs> <laughs> Time is money. Got to get through those title cards really fast. Um, but yeah, I think there's this like this larger idea about your obligation to community and that that's what fueled unions and it's what fueled a lot of the constructs that I feel like have over time been uh debilitated Mm -hmm. but i don't know that if you talk to somebody who lived in well there are a lot of people like this i'm sorry probably some of our listeners uh but you know what i'm saying like i I wonder how generational it is because it seems like a definition of capitalism or there's a good way to do capitalism or a bad way as opposed to like capitalism good or bad Mm -hmm. does that make sense like there was more nuance yeah i mean well, like, and now it's all Wolves of Wall Street? Like, what yeah. happened? I don't know. I mean, I think it, that's kind of why now, because it's all Wolves of Wall Street. I mean, this Because, like, now Mr. Potter would be the Wolf of Wall Street and would yes. just be considered smart. Yes. Or he'd he would be like, be... what's his name in uh, Wall Street? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that movie. What do you call it? Yeah. Gordon Gecko. Gordon Gecko. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. At this, if, oh. if Mr. Potter were, if Mr. Potter, if this movie took place today, Mr. Potter would have a, a cabinet position. Yeah, like he would just like he would have already. <laughs> he been, would be actually like, Dick Cheney. <laughs> he would have owned. I mean, he would have owned like some giant corporate, like some investment firm. But then now, in the last couple yeah. of years, he probably would have gotten like directly involved in the government. Yeah, it was interesting that like the solution of this movie is like I literally wrote that on like mutual aid saves the day, and the mm-hmm. bank is literally useless. The bank is actually the enemy. Yeah, like the holder of wealth is not in, not even there for you. It's literally your neighbors, and that's it. Yeah. Like none of them are like, oh, let me go, like let me go talk to, you know what I mean? Like no one's like, let me talk to the bank or whatever. Like literally, they're all just like, here's my money. Yeah, you have it. Yeah, so, and then like, even more explicitly in the other most famous scene of this movie of like, oh, your money's not here. Yeah. It's in Joe's, Joe's house. house. And, oh, you yeah. have it. And it's like we all. We've distributed the wealth equally. Hey, no. Season the means of production, Quiet, right? No. Um, <laughs> um, and that has lifted everyone up. And you a, like you only get what you need until the bank comes back. Yeah, you don't need very, $242. It's very much a product of the New Deal, mm. like this movie. It's very much like, hey, that worked out pretty good, right? We're, that was probably good, and we should be okay with that, right? Also, stay home and have children. Yeah. <laughs> so do you think that people now watch that movie during Christmas time with their families mm-hmm. and think, this movie is like kind of pushing socialist values, <laughs> yes. or do you th- they do? Some people, I'm okay. sure. Okay. Well, I was wondering if it was more like, yeah, this seems about right because Jesus is involved. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And also small towns. It depends. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it kind of depends on like what lens you're looking at it because there's definitely. This is becoming a. This is talking <laughs> Sorry, about real talk. I got real talk. <laughs> no, real it's fast. fine. I mean, that's, <laughs> this movie is much more this. real talk express than we were expecting. I think because yeah. like there's we're at a point now where. Some people are just always on the lookout for like a left leaning message yeah. in most art. So like Dan's certainly doing air quotes yeah, for sorry. the listener. Mm-hmm. So like I would not be surprised like if this movie were not like if this movie were not like such a cultural touchstone, like if this movie if this exact story were to come out now, there is no question that certain media personalities would be like foaming at the mouth mm-hmm. about the like explicit socialist message at the end of this movie and the vilification of the financial sector the the job makers mm-hmm. yes exactly. Potter was a job maker yes yeah, yeah. that guy pushing his chair around mm-hmm. this reminds me of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of uh the hoover dam have you ever gone on the hoover dam tour no, mm, no. Yes. they like to make lots of jokes about it being the dam tour Ooh, yeah quick side note when yeah. we went to the hoover dam and uh we're parking mm-hmm. the park ranger who was like telling us about thing like she mm-hmm. said like you know like oh yeah you can park any damn in any dance spot you want yeah. like, just kept going just hammered it in and it wasn't until like we had parked the car mm-hmm. and got out my one of my friends was like oh <laughs> <laughs> i thought she was just <laughs> just cursing just yeah real loose yeah she's just like i thought she was just being sassy <laughs> <laughs> like, no that was well 
you know, sanction I mean, sassiness. Yeah. Uh, but the point <laughs> is that the Hoover Dam was built as part of uh, the New Deal, right? And this investment, and it's gorgeous. Like the craftsmanship and the number of workers who created not only um, a physical uh, functioning dam, but also made it beautiful. Mm. Um you know, is, is really present. And so at the end of our tour, which I took during a Republican administration, I think it was during W's time, um, she was like, and you may ask yourself, why would a dam be this beautiful? And I was about to answer, well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> but I didn't, which is good probably that I didn't, um, because she was like, well, we sell tours. And because of our tour sales, the Hoover Dam is completely independent, doesn't require any government funding whatsoever, which is a very Republican spin, mm -hmm. extremely Republican spin on what is literally stamped with evidence of it being part of the New Deal and part of a completely <laughs> different <laughs> tradition. Yeah. And it sat, it sat with me all this time. And I wonder, like, I mean, I wouldn't change anything if I'd been like, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Let me be annoying here. And you know what Let I mean? Let me ruin your day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm, how many day. times a day does that ruin your damn day on the damn tour? So, yeah, anyway. Uh, and I'm sorry for making this podcast so explicit. I love it. <laughs> ah, ah, yeah. You have to bleep all those out. But yeah. 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 As we always do. Yes. Yeah. Bleep I always swears. bleep out the swears. Yep. Cool. Wait, do you guys think that I'm bleeping out swears? <laughs> I've been I, just sending this to all of your bosses. Oh, my and I, your I, swear, I swear on my boss all the Not time. Not Mr. Potter? Oh. Oh, no. No, oh, no. He probably is okay with swears. Mr. Potter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He probably swears all the time. Yeah. And also probably uses a lot of racial slurs. Probably. Oh, Oof, he's probably. so mean. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this movie is socialist tripe, yeah. and you should not let your children watch it yeah. uh, because it is a uh, it's destroying the fabric of our nation. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's bad someday. for families. Bad yes, for families. but also <laughs> but good for birds. What? <gasps> Nail oh, it. Segway. On the segue. Great. Uh, there's a crow that Uncle Billy just has. Just has and in lives the in the building. buildings alone. Yep. I I was looking at my phone briefly, and a th there's a whole <laughs> scene. The whole scene is happening. They're just talking, and I look up, and there's just a bird there. And I did. I was like, "Where did the bird come mm -hmm. from? <laughs> at what point was there the bird? Did the bird yeah. show up? We first see it when everybody's running on the bank, and it, in my mind, like just added to the ambiance of like, "Ooh, things are going wrong." <laughs> A, a the dark omen. indoor crow. Yeah, but then it comes back when things are fine and like a lights yeah. on Billy's it's arm. Like and it's like, oh, bloody. that's like the, like you have like a shop cat, right? Mm -hmm. But this is the buildings and loans crow. Yeah, yeah. As is tradition, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, where's the bank? Uh, as go straight as the crow flies. Yep, yep. you got there. Right. Got yeah. there. It's like how <laughs> Mr. Potter. Matters. It's like how Mr. Potter's bank has his bank Frankenstein monster. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Yes, but it's pretty time. clear that Uncle Billy is a huge animal lover. Yes. We only get to see him in his home one time, but it's adorable. Yeah. I guess we're to his, based on the animals in the space and in the buildings alone, none of these are like conventional pets. Mm. So I guess we're to assume that he just like rescued a bunch of animals, right? I don't. I, like I you can't really, just like I have capture so many, an owl. I have so many questions about right? it because mm. if you, okay, if you're making a movie yep. and you're like, okay, we need to show... <laughs> his space yep. um would you be like you know what let's get um i bet he's an animal lover mm -hmm. let's get an owl mm -hmm. and a squirrel mm -hmm. and s seven other types of birds mm -hmm. yeah. just put those in his apartment that yep. seems about right I that just seems just like softy i think he rescues yeah. injured animals yep. and then we'll have like almost a throwaway line but not about how he like there's two. Like he talks oh, about how yeah. he, the, he even went in the rooms he hasn't opened since Laura died. Yep. Oh. It's like, oh, oh, Laura. This just came out of nowhere. Yeah. So sad. It is a real low point. It's a low point for both of them. Yeah. yeah. They're looking for that eight thousand dollars. Yeah. Which oh, Mr. that Potter. mean Mr. Potter man has, yep. and he knows he has it. Yep. But he knows this rude. is his chance. Leverage. Yeah. Mm. Can we talk about the saddest person in this film? Which is, I can't think of his name, Which but it's Mr. Gower. Oh, Mr. Gower? Old Man Gower? Um, Old Man Gower, who almost kills a child. Shit. Yeah, that's that's like story, right that storyline is movie? so oh. 
dark. Ooh. It's so sad. And it's right at the top. That's the part where I was like, I could cry at this, but I am um, not going to. <laughs> it starts out so much like, oh, here's an example of how George Bailey worked hard. Yep. Yeah. And so he's 12 years old and he works at the shop yep. and his friends are like, Ooh. get in there, slave. We're going to go pl- pay, oh, yeah. play yeah, while yeah. you work. Yep. And it's like, oh, gross. Um, but yeah, you just think it's to show how responsible he is, but it takes such a turn. To show that he is a hashtag good man, even yeah. at the age of 12. Good boy. The good goodest boy. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mr. Gower gets a telegram that his son died of influenza. Yeah. And in his drinking grief, yeah. prescribed poison to a dying, to a sick child. Yes. And then beats up George Bailey for not delivering the poison. Right. But then is fine. Well, George is like just convinces him, like, "Oh, here's look at the drugs. Like, just look at them, and you'll know that you gave him the wrong." But that, yeah, yeah. Oh, also, okay. that boy really played it, yep. like, because mm-hmm. he was really struggling with like the he saw something that got wrong, but it's like, don't you don't you don't question the mm-hmm. boss. So he went to go ask his dad, but his dad's getting reamed at by Mister Potter, mm-hmm. and just I don't know the the kid did a good job yeah. of playing like I. Like, this is so important. I have to do something, but I'm terrified of, like, bucking uh, the power system. It was, like, a great, like, especially when he goes back to the drugstore and gets the shit kicked out of him by the old man. Yeah, including his bad ear. Yeah. It's just, like, bleeding. And And then he's just bleeding, bleeding, like, please don't hit me in my bad ear again. Yeah, but also, he's, at the same time, he's like, I know you're hurting. Like, I know. Like, he's he's dealing with, like, eight adult situations at once. It's so much. Yeah. It's, oh. But he that was, still puts coconut on an ice cream. Yeah, but well, then no, that's they, before. Yeah. That's before that's all a, that happens. That's before he like his first experience with <laughs> like, with adulthood, maybe yeah. having to comfort a drunkard. Uh, but then there was a lovely. They then immediately cut to good old adult, twenty eight year old or twenty two, however old he is. George Bailey is going to go travel to Europe, whatever. And you find out that old man Gower has paid for his luggage, custom made, oh. because they have clearly had a sweet relationship ever since. Oh. He stopped him from murdering a child. Well, and I thought about your bed about we'll cry at least once. Mm-hmm. I think I came oh, yeah. absolute closest during that drugstore confrontation scene. Yeah. That yeah. was intense. That was yeah. And really beautiful and sweet. Yeah. Like, whoo. Man, just thinking about it. Yeah. It adds extra there points. Gravitas. Tears. What do you call it? Uh uh, angel, angel bankruptcy bankruptcy, oh. bankruptcy angel oh. <laughs> sorry that was not worth the pause <laughs> there were a lot of great like uh i feel like there were a lot of a lot of the actors had really good turns of like let me show you how devastated i am by whatever situation i'm in <laughs> like yeah. old man gower fucking crushed it because we, even we were confused because at first you just thought he's like oh it's like just like he's just a drunk whatever but then the next time you see him he's like tears are streaming down his face and even then, you're like, was oh, it you who was like, oh, he's got the somebody sweats. Somebody was just like, yeah, I just thought like, oh, no, he's like drunk sweat. But then it then zooms in and highlights like your <laughs> oh. son has been, has died from influence on the telegram. Yeah. So sad. Oh, and there's like a picture of his son next to the fucking oh, easy chair God. in the supply room. Oh. 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 And then on George and on. Uh, on his, as I, I wrote it down as George's existential crisis montage. Yeah. Where he, he loses $8,000. He talks to Mr. Potter, or maybe he, I can't remember the order of it. Anyway, he goes home. When he goes home, it's just a mess oh, he's so for mean. like 10 he's minutes straight. Mm-hmm. But also, like, there is a couple of moments. Like, there's a point where he picks up his youngest kid and it's just like falling apart. Oh, yeah. And like, he Mary like, oh. sees it. And it is heart wrenching. And James, Mr. James Stewart, professional actor, oh. does a great job. He really brings it. This, oh. this might be another breaking news segment. <laughs> that James Stewart's a good actor. Hey, yeah. right? You heard it here first. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like. I really. I don't often notice good acting. Say, but I did this time. Mm-hmm. I don't know that boardroom scene where he's talking about how good his dad was and yeah. why the building loan is important. I was like, oh, it's like impassioned but natural. Right. Mm-hmm. He's not like slamming the table like, yeah. sir, my <laughs> father wasn't blah blah blah. Yeah. Also, that move he makes to let his cigarette by striking a match cool. on the step. Oh, my God. Cool as shit. So, so cool. cool. I, yeah. felt, I haven't felt that way since... Uh... Humphrey Bogart? No. Ralph Macchio? <laughs> no, Jurassic Park. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum? Yes. Oh, yeah. Ian Malcolm. Teens, turn off the podcast for just a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just 
smoking's really cool, okay. right? <laughs> so cool. He, he looks, looks so cool. So cool. Shit, he lit so that cool. cigarette off the stoop. Yeah. Oh. And then he's when he's got that pipe, just like walking around with a pipe, yelling at people. He got the pipe to talk to his veteran brother who hasn't seen since the war started yeah. across mm. the seas or Washington, yeah. wherever he is. Washington. Yeah. Right. Whatever. Washington. Getting London. honored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, he looks cool smoking. He looks cool smoking. All right. Oh. Teens, okay. welcome back. Come on back. <laughs> Uh, um, but oh, one other moment that really resonated with me while he's freaking out in his house, yep. like raging at everyone, he goes up the staircase and pulls uh, the oh, yeah, the, head of the uh, banister. The, whatever. Yep. I don't know. There's, there's probably a, name a word for, that. for it. Yeah, there is. The top, little topper. Top of the banister post. Yep. Whatever. Top of the banister. <laughs> top of the <laughs> banister oh, post. Do you? Who wants to oh, no. have something to grab onto right before they grab onto the railing? <laughs> Oh, I do. Top of the banister to you. <laughs> oh, it's me, the up for Dodger. <laughs> oh, Nick, that banister right good. Wow. Anyway, so he, it keeps falling off. Uh, it keeps falling off. LOL. We, we see that throughout the apart. house. Yeah. Like, that's one part that is not yet to get repaired. Yep. Um, and as a homeowner, I it really oh, resonated yeah, with, like, too. the Holy thing shit. that is still broken that yep. you haven't been able to fix. And, like, he picks it up, and you can see, like, oh, the rage yeah. build. And he tamps it down yep. enough to like put, put it, it back, back and mm-hmm. storm up the He's stairs. He's so close to just tossing that thing. Or, oh. as you learned from your toddler child, maybe just biting it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> out of anger. The toddler has bit things he's mad at. It's like, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I absolutely get it. I have it. totally felt have that total, level yeah. of rage. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that whole... I think that was where... That was the scene that kind of like... Uh, that whole scene where he's going through the house, it's like... Such a roller coaster, and that's where I kind of felt like the most, uh, yeah, like the part where he's just like a complete tool of the Mary when they first are getting together, or like the cutaway before they get married. Like that's just like too much. It's mm-hmm. like cool, a dude. She's a person. Yeah. Um, but then like that scene is very like the way he plays it. Like you can kind of see, like it is like there is some kind of like connective tissue between those two scenes mm-hmm. like it's still shitty like he's still i mean he's shitty in both scenes like he actually did his entire family in both those scenes yeah but like he does play it with enough nuance where like you do sort of uh i don't know like he there's enough of like an emotional range to his shitty behavior where like you can tell like it's not just like i am drunk or mm-hmm. i'm angry mm-hmm. it's like literally like i'm having like horrible emotional problems and i'm a man in 1946 yeah. and don't yeah. know how to express myself <laughs> yep right. Yeah, cool. It was like we were—I mean, we were getting up to bogey drinks alone in a bar territory yeah. in terms of like we're man pain. There. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, we were getting on there. screen. For but sure. he had too much stuff to do. Yes. Uh, we kind of we hit some MVPs, but I want to make sure we get to Just all of them. Get in there, especially Giuseppe Martini. Oh my mm. God! The fun Italian man, <laughs> <laughs> who George <laughs> Bailey helps <laughs> buy a house. And then loads his whole family and his goat in a car. And it's just, I mean, he's a stereotype. Yeah, absolutely. But he's so nice. Yeah. And, and so then he charming. owns the, the local bar. Yes. And always has a bottle of wine handy. Yep. I he love was him. great. And he was just like, I just love how he's just like, yeah, everyone. Like the fact that like, you know, like the way he piles his children in the car, it seemed like each child had an, at least one animal. That one girl had two, two puppies, puppies. And then he just uh, picks a goat up and throws it in the car. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. He was great. great. He was great. Um, I wrote Pipe Man, but I don't know who that is. Oh, uh, when I do. Oh. When George and Mary fell into the pool at the dance. Oh, oh yeah. That because dance that scene one kid was who so got sweet. Smildly cuckolded, but then decided to have fun with his new friend, who may be the devil, right. is my theory. Yeah. Or his lover. Well, yeah. yeah. Both. It can be both. Lover. It can be both. Why not both? The devil could be the devil and the yep. to uh, open up the dance floor. Yep. And there's a pool underneath. I mean, there are angels that show up. Why not the exactly. devil? Exactly. Yep. Although the devil might also be uh, the creepy man behind Mr. Potter the whole time. Can be both. <sighs> and I guess they're dancing with the devil. Ooh. Anyway, so they fall in the pool. They're going around having a great time being just fun young people, like flirting. And it's yep. just this, they keep cutting. And at first, you don't understand what's happening. That's what I love about it. Like, you don't know why he's in the scene. They keep cutting to this man in his uh, undershirt, just smoking a pipe on the porch and doing, like, kind of like the spittoon guy, just doing these very deliberate, like, oh, I'm just going to look over here now and back to my pipe. And they cut to him, like, three times before he does anything. 
Oh, he's great. And then he finally stands up and is just like, hey, why don't you kiss her already? Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of talking so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then when George is like, kind of a wiener about it, he's oh. like, oh, youth is wasted on the wrong people and mm-hmm. goes back into his house. Funny line. To presumably be like, oh, baby, I love you. I'm so glad I kissed you that night <laughs> under the whatever. Oh, here's my eight children. I have a wonderful life. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably. Presumably. <laughs> yeah. That guy was great. Yep. One of my MVPs was the editor of the movie <laughs> who loved to insert a jump cut at many times. Yeah, I just wonder. that was like a damaged. Maybe, or like a lighting no, issue or something. I mean, I don't think anything was damaged because it's, the, it was, the cuts were cutting from a wide shot to like a medium shot. Mm. So like, there wouldn't be any reason why they wouldn't be able to keep Unless both got damaged on exactly the right parts. Right. It just seemed, it was very weird. It was like they didn't know how to edit I mean, maybe it. they just couldn't afford multiple cameras. No, you, you shoot, what? No, you shoot it twice, they shot it twice, and then they edit it together. How do you know? Because that's how that works. But what if that isn't how they did it, and that's why it looks so weird? How do you think they did it then? I'm saying like they shot the one part, they had it, the, f- uh, the, the, like the full shot, and yeah. then they said cut. Brought the camera. It's like now finish your line, and that's why it's edited so. Weird. Wait, they just like kept moving closer, yeah. and then they would move backward. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I have to do some research now. I'm fascinated by. I this. don't know. I I think they shot the scene at a wide shot, and I think they shot the scene at a medium shot, sure. and then they cut together the parts that were best but they were like oh this looks terrible mm-hmm. that's called a jump cut and then they wrote it into how to edit things <laughs> and then sent it to the future oh yeah but i mean also what is the whole editor thing like uh crap in crap out sometimes you don't get good stuff to work yep, with. yep that's true mm. very good point i mean that's probably what happened is they didn't have a full take where all the things fit and no matter what there would be a jump cut Mm -hmm. so they're cutting to a different shot yeah because but it still they ran out of film or they They got to the end of the flap 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 maybe yeah i don't know now i'm really interested and i'm gonna look this up yeah Yeah, i was so weird i didn't actually think that's what they did i don't know if you i don't know if that was clear it seems possible. No, it wasn't. I'm not picking up any of your okay. cues sorry. today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm with you, Beth. I was like trying to entertain that possibility. That's how we would, when we did a fully improvised movie, we would pull stuff like that. Like cut mid-sentence? Ah, uh, Maybe not mid-sentence. Mm. Sometimes. It's sometimes, it's hard to get the timing right mm-hmm. um, <laughs> when you're improvising it. I mean, it might have been a lighting <laughs> thing too. Like it might have just been like, oh shit! Like a bulb just popped in the middle of our wide shot or something. Mm, yeah, light sucks back then. Yeah, I don't know. Right, lightheads. Yeah, <laughs> tweet at us. I'm actually genuinely curious because that's my understanding is that li- using that much light at any point when you're using old ass light bulbs kind of sucked ass. Yeah. Oh. When did like movies become a thing? What do you mean? Like wh- when? When was the first movie made? Well, there's the train when, coming right at you. Yeah. What was that? When, what year was that? 1901. Something like that. Pretty early. Okay. So this movie was made 46 years, probably after the first movie. Sure. Okay. I, I am, I am first, genuinely like, actual... wondering if like jump cuts were not like part of the, um, like language. Then, like there's just certain like rules yeah. that mm-hmm. like you have for editing now. And I wonder if it wasn't part of it yet. I yeah. don't know. Or if maybe it... it just, because that movie ended up being a flop maybe it just had such a low budget yeah i don't know i mean they probably spent their uh, entire budget on that celestial opening oh right yeah. true <laughs> they had to get three galaxies to speak to each mm-hmm. other i mean God, That's can you imagine big budget yeah, yeah. Move. <laughs> big stars i actually uh, was thinking we were watching it. Oh, thank you um i was thinking that when we watched it though i was like oh man this is the least expensive part of this movie right <laughs> They just had to flicker some light bulbs, yep. get some voiceover, boom, yep. done. Nice. I'm done. Ugh. I'm surprised they didn't just tell George's whole story in that. I know. They're like, okay, <laughs> so then lights. when he's 12. <laughs> 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 yeah. Beth, you wanted to talk about Annie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, There's a part in the movie where, okay, so Annie is uh the help, I guess, at their house, the- at the Bailey's house. The parents. Yes. Yeah. And um, there's a part where his brother comes in and just like 
slaps mm-hmm. her butt. Yep. Yeah. And says, "Re, I can't remember what he says." To I'm her. in love with you. It's yeah. the moon or something. Yeah. Yep. It was real I, gross. It was super gross. Yep. And I wonder, do you th- does that get left in on the TV version? I wonder how much of this made it yeah, to the right? TV version. Uh, yeah, it'd be. It'd and be I don't want to blame the nation's broadcasters for my poor memory, but. I really don't think I've seen any, like, I've never seen the celestial part. Mm. That's definitely. I cannot imagine leaving that in. But maybe they do. Well, that seems like also to lay out the entire right. structure and premise, premise I mean, of the movie. But we get it. Come on. He's got a life. It's wonderful. But he doesn't know it yet. And <laughs> but also out. those, I don't know. I have never seen it. But <laughs> um, those angels voiceovers also come in and out throughout the whole movie. Yeah. So, like, if you're, like, you had not seen them, and then 40 minutes in, there's a voiceover, two people talking about <laughs> George Bailey's life. Right. I would be like, wait, who are these people? I yeah. would accept it. I'd be like, this is free television. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you're eight year old. I mean, watching you never three. probably like ever watched the whole thing through anyway. So, sure. yeah, I don't know. I'm really curious about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's an interesting thing about many movies that we've watched on this podcast is I don't remember the beginning of them. And it's probably because anytime I've seen it, it's been on TV, and right. I start partway through the movie well but also they trim the movies for time right yeah so it's like what uh, do they trim i it's like sometimes with um like the the advent of like collecting television shows now that you can get like anything on dvd or streaming or whatever mm-hmm. like you realize sometimes like if you see an old tv episode that you remember watching you might see stuff you had don't remember at all because you realize like oh they cut that out every time they syndicated it for time like this particular scene yeah. In that episode or whatever. Wow. It's weird. By the way, I looked it up and uh, It's a Wonderful Life is the most televised movie of all time. Cool. In second place is A Christmas Story, but Turner Broadcast owns that. So mm-hmm. they, they're they the only channel that shows it. Well, but they show it a lot. Yeah. Well. Um, enough that it's like in second place. <laughs> yeah. I think they had like 20. They used to do, I don't know if they still do, so they do a 24 hours of a Christmas story. What? The one movie? Yeah, they movie? just show it 24, which is great because you can turn it on anytime. Is that great? Wherever. Yeah. And then you just watch like from the middle to the end to mm-hmm. the beginning to the middle. Well, it just like it doesn't matter when you come and go, right? So if you take sure. off for a little while, you'll come back to one of your favorite parts. Uh, Cartoon Network one time ran a screwy squirrel uh, marathon on April is. Fools. It was one of those. Um, it was just one of those uh, Hanna Barbera cartoons mm-hmm. that they inherited, and mm-hmm. it was before they had a lot of original programming, and so it was a stunt programming choice on April Fools. And so they showed the same 11-minute cartoon over like and over and over episode? again. <laughs> the same episode, but they would keep all the packaging that you normally have. So they'd be like, next up, Scooby-Doo. And then the opening first, uh, squir- uh, Squirrely Squirrel would come up, Screwy Squirrel yeah. would come up. That's amazing. That's amazing. They got calls angry angry parents like it turned out to be like a total like it was um successful sure. in some ways that it got attention yes. but it was a lot of really negative attention it was very early yeah. in the networks i'm sure my kids wanted to watch scooby Doo. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i mean because you know kids love routine yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. i always love that they kept the packaging the same they yeah, kept promising something else and it was Oof. just the same episode. that's amazing Rough. but i do think it's magical to show a christmas story over and over again and turner also um uh, has broadcast It's a Wonderful Life quite extensively because yeah. that was a big part of Ted Turner's scheme. But it turns out he did not colorize it. Somebody oh. else did. Oh. He colorized a bunch of stuff, but not yeah. that particular That's movie. big on that. Mm-hmm. So, great. Ted fans, rest assured. <laughs> we keep bringing <laughs> those Turner Ted, facts. Ted fan <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Please, if you are a TED fan, please tweet yeah. at us because that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. like, if you're Hashtag that. TED Talk. Oh, oh. That could be confusing. I know. Toast TED Maybe talk. we'll get some some people who are interested in TED Talks. We want to bring them in. Yeah, podcast. trick them in. I like it. I love it. I'm I love it. for a thoughtful treatise on our... Uh... Do you think we could do a TED Talk about <laughs> movies and memory? I bet we could. I bet sure. we could come up with 10 minutes about... Oh, yeah. yeah. And sure. be At like, this point. Just in a certain... If you say it in a certain cadence, people will believe you. Yeah. You gotta walk back and forth on the stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and another... do your hands. Yep. What? Oh, you know, yeah. They're yep. thoughtful yep. way you put your hands And then you like set up a joke and mm-hmm. then you point your remote at the screen and the punchline <laughs> is on the... Yep. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Oh, yeah. I have another MVP. <laughs> okay. Beth K. Gibbs. <laughs> I mean, always. Wow. Thank you. Um, thank you. But collective, a collective MVP. There's a point where... Uh, George 
he's having he's being all drunk and solemn one of the times he's drunk and solemn runs into violet who has been into him mm-hmm. trying to get that for yeah. years she wants that mm-hmm. b for what the what b that? bailey ba- oh, oh. <laughs> I thought you wow. meant, but <laughs> Bailey went. Maybe. We don't know what his butt looks like. He's wearing those giant wool <laughs> pants the whole movie. Loose wool trousers. <laughs> they go up to his belly button yeah, and then a do. short yeah. tie that Hell comes yeah, down Hell yeah, they it. do. God, mm-hmm. I love it. Anyway, so he's finally like, all right, I'm drunk and depressed. I'll go hang out with this. What, Beth? Oh, I'm not going <laughs> to do that on the podcast. <laughs> Beth was joking in jest about it was in jest. the... I was slut shaming her. of Violet. Mm-hmm. But just because the movie set it up as like, yeah, the, hey, this is the woman you're not supposed right. to want George I mean, to get. Every single time she like, was on screen, they were like, look at this whore. They, like, like, even as a child, just like, they kind of they were. were like, yeah. God, it was God. always like, look at that dress. She's around a bunch of men. Yeah. I like George. You like every boy. Right. Is there anything wrong with that? Mm. Which is a good comeback. For exactly. Yeah. Also, she probably read that snappy comeback. Hashtag book. liberated mm-hmm. women. It's fine. Violet, you're great. Yeah. Go to New York <laughs> or don't. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this is all in the same hashtag. Okay. Anyway, so he's so she's finally like, oh, George, hi, and he's like, oh yeah, let's uh, let's. Well, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> and then Violet's like, nothing. I'm not. Do-. You know, she's being very sultry and thing. like this. Is, she knows. Like, you can see it. I mean, again, great acting. You can tell in her face. She's like, this is it. We're gonna bang. I'm gonna land this white whale. Um, <laughs> But then he like goes off on his like adventure mode where he's like, oh, let's get barefoot in the grass and, and go to the top of the hill and look at the moon. Whatever. And for whatever reason, that is like freaking her the fuck out. Yeah. I don't really know why she's quite that freaked barefoot out. Barefoot in the grass? Yeah, she like, wants to go to the club. She even said that. Or she, like, she said that back to him. Like, you want me to do what? Yeah. I mean, I have to say, if you're standing in the middle of town and you're surrounded by stuff to do. Yeah. And what the person suggests doing is going out. Being in nature, with being nature. in nature, yeah. nature walk? with just them overnight, which would scandalize you. Okay, and also doesn't sound that fun. That right. doesn't sound fun. I don't sound on you. Go see the moon. I would have gotten with Bailey up there. Yeah, man, I would have gotten that bee. See the falls <laughs> by the moon. <laughs> yeah, be that moon, baby. But yeah, wow. I see what you're saying. Yeah, there's some. It's creeper. Sure. It's like uh, I would feel the same with there. Like, let's go to my empty apartment. So, but what did she want to do then? I think she wanted to be taken out on the town, and then like. Maybe get a down. kiss. Oh, Pound Town. Get down to Pound Town. Ew. Well, we don't know. <laughs> She's a liberated woman, She's Molly. a liberated woman, maybe. I know, but... She got that hat that was amazing. It was like an it eagle's so butt good. sitting on her head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, none of these are the MVP. The MVP is when she says, you want me to do what? She's like, drive from the grass. Oh. And then suddenly there are like a dozen people <laughs> laughing at George that like... Literally, were not there before. They're just no. like surrounding them in a circle, it's like, and it's amazing. It's like they were having a conversation, and what we don't see is like one guy like is walking by yeah. and does like a double take, right. and then he starts kind of looking, and, and another like guy walks, over, and then like, he's like, "Hey, come look like at this. text all their friends." Yeah, and yeah. Then like slowly, like the whole town is around them but his, watching yeah. this. But his like monologue plan is like maybe thirty seconds, right. maybe less than that. Yeah. Like, he's not talking for a long no. time, no. but like. 40 people oh, not that much happens in Bedford Falls I guess yeah. that's true like hey George Bailey <laughs> George talking to Vivian or whatever it is oh, Violet. holding on. her a little close they're standing kind of close together oh I heard she wanted to get that bee is it finally, <laughs> <laughs> is it finally Violet's happened? finally getting the bee come look <laughs> <laughs> anyway MVPs they're all great yeah they laughed at George. Uh, oh, I think I bet there would be like two uh, hilarious spinsters who commented on things. I don't think oh. we did it that. I think we more had Bert and Ernie, the mm-hmm. cabbie and the cop. Those are the closest yeah. to what I was thinking. Uh, no, yeah, relation. Bert, Ernie, no relation. No yeah. relation to yeah. the puppets. But that was Muppets. amongst the so <laughs> Back to Walls test, which this passed, right? Oh, flying yes. colors. Yeah. Like a few, yeah. Quite a few times. Uh, mm-hmm. Just a lot, of, uh, a lot of people in this town with names. Yep. And <laughs> some of them are women. Certainly. Like yeah. a, like a mm-hmm. decent chunk. Yeah. Uh, and just to go back to the Annie comment, because yeah, there's some weird, creepy sexual harassment stuff yeah. that happens, which is maybe acceptable for 1946. I mean, th- I mean, really, like the whole concept of her character, like in 2018, is like, oh boy, yeah, the, pers- I mean, the like, one person uh, of color in the movie is like there. Well, there were a few others because it really stands out. You're like, oh look, so some of the friends and neighbors who come, yeah, yeah, yep, are people of color. Oh. Um, but uh, what I liked about Annie's character is that there was a real like. She had real agency and rapport. I mean, there's obviously a status difference yes. and a employee employer kind of difference, but she gave them some shit, yes. which I enjoyed both comedically and that it wasn't just a 
I'll bring out your toast right away. I did enjoy her sass. For yeah. sure. She had some good zingers. What was her? She had one that was real good about. <sighs> shoot. About listening close. I'd listen if there's anything I wanted to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Something good. Something like that. And then you the, should just watch the movie. She had a great zinger at the end. <laughs> It'll be on TV. She had a great <laughs> Turn it on right now. It's on right where, now. Like, yeah. They're going through the entire cast of extras giving mm-hmm. money to George. And she comes up and she's like, I was saving money for a divorce if I ever got married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good. But we Never really gasped months. after she said for a divorce. We're like, oh. I was delighted because I thought that was going to be the end of the sentence. Like, <laughs> I've been planning to divorce my husband. But, but now I'm going to stick it out. Yeah. Because well, somehow money. Pay for it. But also, like, George should probably give her give her at least her money back because, mm-hmm. like, enough yeah. money, like, white people have been taking enough right? resources from people of color, especially at that time. <laughs> especially when we're talking about property owners and home ownership. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We already had, like, 20 minutes of this kind of shit at the beginning. Unless <laughs> Beth cuts it out. Uh, anyway, MVPs, we didn't really talk about Nick. We kind of talked. We touched on Nick. I think we need to get into Nick hard. Because, what? Okay. What is happening? <laughs> okay, hold on. All right. I like that. Wait, which one is Nick? Nick was the, the bartender. The bartender. He uh, worked for he Giuseppe Martini in, in the real world. But then in Pottersville, he owned his own bar, Nick. And he's mean. But it was a seedy bar. Because Giuseppe probably like got him out of like some shady shit. Wait, Giuseppe was, was like, oh, I'm an Italian stereotype. You come, you eat with my family. You're gonna be a good kid. And then Nick, like, learned to make a pasta. Yeah, and, like Nick like became a better man because of Giuseppe. Without Giuseppe, though, oof. Ooh, Nick was hard mean was he, was mean. Hard. he was mean he was mean but he also had so rude yes. to mm-hmm. mr Glau- old man gower glower glower gower gower not glower mm-hmm. that's the pharmacist yeah he comes yeah. in gower's in a bad place because he killed Murdered a child someone and went 20 years ago <laughs> jail awful um but then they just like spray him in the face with oh, seltzer water yeah, yeah. And like get out of here haha <laughs> yeah uh but the reason i think the reason we love nick so much is because he even though he ho- was <laughs> yes that's of course he like like at least compared to everyone else in the movie like you know it's sort of like everyone else is kind of like everyone else felt like like yes i could see them living in the same town as george bailey like they're all just kind of like oh i'm kind of a cartoony whatever oh, it's eustace and tilly typing away at their typewriters and drinking gin out of teacups and helping george at the building alone or whatever but then nick sounds like every henchman <laughs> in like a noir movie yeah. right like even yeah. his posture is very just like do you hey bub you think you can just come in here and talk about i don't know like he was just yeah. so he was like, so uses we serve a hard liquor get out of here yeah, who we- are you to call me nick i've never seen you in my life He's, I don't know. It was just very weird. Like yeah. he had, he was just so, like he looked. He seemed like the kind of character was to, who was supposed to like emerge from the shadows and like intimidatingly like pull a gun out while a Mr. Potter character was like, mm, yes, we're going to. <laughs> yeah. And they did like threaten someone with a fist too. He's like, yeah. I'll give you one of these. Yeah. He threatened to punch Clarence in the face. Yeah. Uh, wow. He did that great zinger after he kicked him all out though, and he was just opening and closing his catch. He's like, hey, I'm making wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he was great. He was great. Everyone's great. Is that all the MVPs? I feel like uh, that's all mine. I mean, Zuzu is adorable. Zuzu's <gasps> pedals. Oh, oh, Zuzu's pedals. The kids are cute. Those kids are cute. Damn. They're, They're now cute and funny. Old women and men. Mm-hmm. What? They're now old women and men. Oh yeah. Oh, like the actors? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are they all still alive? I don't even know. Oof. Wow. I mean, like that dog's newsletter. not with us anymore what dog? for sure. The dog that I said, good dog. No one paid attention when I said good dog. Which dog? <laughs> okay, at the... Uh, there's like a group of boys walking down the street and they're heading toward the um, pharmacy. Uh-huh. Um, and then they're like, get in there, go to work or whatever. Yep. Um, there's a good dog that runs across the screen. Oh, I didn't see the dog. It was a big, fluffy black dog. Nice. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, there's some really good animal cameos in general. Yep. Good owl, good goat, mm-hmm. great goat. Great goat. Great goat. Greatest of all time. Yeah, as far wow. as I know. <laughs> goat, goat. Goat, <laughs> dot com. What? Uh, <laughs> goat, goat, dot com. Uh, yeah. If you are one of George and Mary Bailey's children and you are still alive, tweet yeah. at us or have Channing Tatum tweet for you. I assume everyone in Hollywood knows each other. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have Channing Tatum tweet at us. Hashtag. <laughs> I'm alive. I'm alive. <laughs> 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 we'll know who you are. We'll know what yeah. you mean. Uh, and then add that hashtag TED Talk, and we'll get a really nice cross section. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, hashtag yeah, it's great. still a wonderful life. <laughs> oh, and that's that good. you're still alive. Yeah. 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 I mean, that was kind of oh. the whole point of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he wrote. What was the inscription that Clarence put in his copy? Tom Sawyer, like any man with friends is something. 
Oh, a man forgot. cannot be poor who has friends. Yeah. Something like that. So yeah. sweet. Friendship. And if you're not with us, haunt our dreams. Yes. Who? Oh. Right. The, if they're dead, they can haunt our dreams. Oh, the children of George Bailey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, but don't haunt. Maybe just like. That I mean, it's not like haunting. malicious haunting. No, just like be just like. Say hello. Hey. Good haunting. Good haunting. I'm hashtag just nice good haunting. haunting. <laughs> hashtag. I, just, po- just pop up and be like, hashtag. I'm a, I had a wonderful life. <laughs> oh, I hope you had a wonderful life. Yeah. Ooh, child oh. actors. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had made a note to just mention, I was did not remember how strongly the religious overtones were in this yeah. one. It was really strong. I mean, it should. I guess I'm just thinking like current movies can have lots of angel references without there being a lot of underpinnings of the rest of religion. Right. Yeah. And in this one, there are prayers. There's like celestial beings talking to each other. Yeah. It's very explicit. Right. Yeah. Like it was very, a movie today, if this movie were made today, mm-hmm. there would, I don't know how likely it would be that the like, big moment of the movie would be george bailey like literally praying to god that he still wants to live yeah. like directly to god yeah like, he absolutely. may be like say something about it out loud but i don't think it'd be couched as like i am literally talking to god yeah no I, absolutely like yeah. you would have to show it on the religion channel unless morgan Freeman was there well, as god. i was gonna I was say like, yeah <laughs> that's what i'm talking about what or about like bruce ends. almighty yeah that yeah. was a very that was that was a very good. But like movie. they had, that's what I mean. Like if they had a, they had God the character. Oh, I see what you're you know saying. What I mean? Yeah. Like you wouldn't just have like earnest actor just praying to God. Yeah. Necessarily, it was super religious, but none of the scenes took place in a church. Correct. For a community based. And even Home Alone. Yeah. Mm. Had a church. a church scene. Seems yeah. like I mean, interesting to George, leave that out. I mean George. <laughs> They say they call George like he has a line where he kind of calls out that he himself is not a very religious man. Yeah, that's true. Right before he does the prayer. But then also like he kind of comes to God at the end. So the yeah. morals are okay. The morals are uh, don't do not wander. Come home mm-hmm. from the war. Have a family. Have build a house. America number one. Uh, gift but, economy. But also gift economy. <laughs> so America number one, but in a way that doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, the Lord will provide if you are oh, willing to come, go along with his plan. Yeah. And right? also say prayers work. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think that'd be the simple. That'd be, I guess that'd be the easier way of saying it. Yeah. I prayer, mean, you know, cause it just starts with like yep. a little praying for this guy Yep. and he makes it through. Yep. So boom, done. Boom, done. Pretty cut and dry. Here you go. Mm-hmm. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That's and true. also happy new year. They do sing all these signs. Yeah, all so it becomes like, yeah. Yep. It's a Scottish Scottish poem. Yes. Scots. Supposedly uh, by kindness. Robert Burns. Okay. Mm. What? Because uh, the line in it that gets repeated a couple of times mm. is something about sharing a cup of kindness oh. or having a cup of kindness. The end of that movie is so touching. Mm-hmm. Like it really is just like look at all these people who like each other, and also maybe George Bailey can find some inner peace now that he realizes like how much people care about him yeah that is reciprocal Mm -hmm. and the you know maybe he can take a vacation right like i hope they use a little bit of the extra funds to just go to europe for a hot minute yeah it is really sad how much he doesn't get to do what he wants to do right Mm -hmm. But also interesting that he does in some ways get to do exactly what he wants to do because what he wants to do is be a builder. Mm-hmm. But he pictures that as building 100-story skyscrapers. Ooh, and those but big actually, bridges that he destroys the model of. Yeah. 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 But actually he mm-hmm. builds this – he the literally town. builds a community. Mm-hmm. He builds yeah. houses that mm-hmm. replace shitty – He builds the town? Yeah, shacks. Damn. So he really – he actually is doing the thing, and mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like he ever – they don't make that literal connection. Yeah, though. and there's that great, like, it's not, there's a little plaque under his dad's portrait mm-hmm. in, like, the later years that says something like, the only thing, like, the only, it's something like, all you can take with you is that which you gave away, or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. And his dad is so supportive uh, of him going away. It's know. really sweet. That's a great scene. Yeah. <sighs> Jeez. Yeah. yeah I'm, I don't know. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I'm excited to rate this movie. Let's do it. Well, I before assume. we do oh, that, right. we uh, like to read a maximum rating <laughs> review <laughs> of our podcast, totsrecall.com. Yep. 
uh, in an impression of a character from this movie. Yeah. Um, I think we all know we're going to do James Stewart. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Zuzu. Unless someone wants to do, I don't know, Clarence? No. Clarence. You could do Don Very Lee, good. but that would just be slightly yeah. breathy. Right. Yeah. Um, does anybody feel inspired? We do have reviews. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, listeners. <clears throat> I'll do it. Yay. Okay. Do the one that. Okay. What, what oh, that's all one. Okay. It's yeah. just so long. I'm not used to people being so verbose. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Zeus paddles. What that, Rufio? <laughs> Bryce Kalal from USA. Whatever my mood, these four hosts have always managed to make it better. <laughs> from from their ridiculous bets on what could happen in movies they can't remember to their in-depth analysis and impressions of the background <laughs> characters. <laughs> Dan Jacquard and Molly Chase, Dan Linden and Beth Gibbs. Well, they laugh their way through movie memory loss, and it is truly in- infectious. For each film, they make bold guesses about everything from plot points to... Whether or not it will pass the Bechdel test. <laughs> they discuss their findings after watching it together. Well, it's, it's more than just a discussion about movies. It's, it's a hilarious group of good friends. Having a, great, <laughs> having a great time. That makes Totes Recall a great lesson. Five Joe Prados to you all. <laughs> Oh, Thank you. Joe Prado. And five Joe Prado. Hey, I'm Thank proud you of that Prados. review. You should be proud of so, that impression. You should be proud of that review, Bryce yeah. Kalal from USA. <laughs> Way to go, man. That's Thank so you for cool. clarifying from USA, because yeah. we may or may not still have at least one Australian listener. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I, there's no I way. <laughs> After all that. Yeah. Tweet at us. Ooh, yeah. I don't want to call you out, though I do know your name. <laughs> Tweet at us. Hashtag, I'm alive. I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag TED Talk. Hashtag TED Talk. Hashtag Bell's Beach. Oh, Beth, we just lost them. <laughs> oh, I've been to Bell's Beach. It's That's beautiful. Right. Okay. Oh. I'm just back. telling Bring you. Back. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yep. Thank you. If you, re- if you want a review read, leave it. Five stars or maximum ranking somewhere else. Somewhere else, but tell us <laughs> if it's not on iTunes. Yep. Okay, uh, Dan, you gave it uh, five, what Bank- are we doing? Bank- bankruptcy angels. Yep. <laughs> which are angels that save you from bankruptcy, right? not angels that are themselves bankrupt. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Although that Clarence was bankrupt he when was, it came to yeah, wings. Like he was like whatever economy is in heaven, like he clearly was on the bottom of the, well, right? He was, he was learning. He was Second class. Way up. Ooh, how many classes are there? You. <laughs> this is why Lucifer was cast down after he tried to. All right. <laughs> Uh, he had to open cheated tools. on his test. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was very charming. Uh, I certainly had some problematic moments that I don't know. I guess can't be helped for a movie mm-hmm. that's over six, seventy years old. Oh wow! You're something like that, right? Like there had to have been at least a couple. Like mm-hmm. we were guaranteed a few scenes. We were like, oh boy. Oh yeah. Um, and is next year seventy-five? Is that right? We gotta do math though. Why are you making no. us do math? No, that's not right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Sixty something. Anyway, I loved it. It was a classic, uh, not a flop, which is a movie that doesn't do well. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was a flop, not a flop. In my heart. Commercial flop. Yes. Not a heart flop. Not heart. Not a syndication flop anymore. Number one aired thing of all time or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Five bankruptcy angels. They're swooping in. They're saving the banks. We don't need Obama to come in anymore <laughs> to no. bail out the whatever people were angry. It doesn't matter. Okay, five. <laughs> five bank seals. Ran it in, Dan. What? Ran it in. <laughs> Beth, you gave it four. You thought it would probably be good. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was probably good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I thought I really liked most of it. I thought some scenes were better than other scenes, and I there were elements of the movie making that I didn't really like. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I'm going to stick with four. Huh? Great. Yeah. Great. I gave it 3.1 because I'm not a coward. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will also give it a four. I I liked it, but there was definitely some moments where I was like, this is long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think you even said out loud at one point, ooh, <laughs> yeah. this is long. <laughs> and if I'm noticing how long a movie is, there's no way you can get five. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was a good movie. James Stewart did it. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, four angels. Oh, saving 
four buildings and loans. I thought you were going to say Saved by the Bell. Why would he say Saved by the Bell? I don't know. Every time a <laughs> Every bell time is a bell uh, oh, saved, saved. Yeah. Jesse. Zach gets Morris. Mm-hmm. Times out Morris. the world because he's a wizard or something. Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. what? He used to time out. He used to stop time. Oh, oh yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Out of this world girl. Yeah, he's also an alien crossover. Yeah. Talk wow. to me, studio that owns the rights to those shows. Ooh, I'll watch Out of This World anytime. <laughs> Great. Ooh. I don't know this show. Oh, uh, Teen Girl is half alien. She's got a deadbeat dad who is an alien. Yeah. She Talks lives her through mom a space she, crystal. Yeah. And she can stop time by touching her fingers together. Oh, I remember that part. Yep. Yep. Do you remember Small Wonder? No. That's a, a robot. Who's a robot. I know of it. I don't remember She's it, though. She's a small Molly, wonder. what do you rate this movie? <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, you give it five. <laughs> classic. Great. You love it. Yeah. I mean, that's all mostly true. I found myself really impatient at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there are a couple of pieces that I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm so precious with my five ratings. Um, on the other hand, man, it's a really great movie. I'm going to do 4.5. Bankruptcy Angels. Great. Great. Nice. What's that half an angel doing? Uh, half an angel is uh, just stacking coins like Scrooge McDuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has is it half an angel because that angel has not received its wings yet? Yeah, it's uh, but it's uh, it's wow, on its the way. Wings are half an angel. Yeah, I guess they are pretty big in like a lot of I classic depictions. I mean, they might depictions. even be two thirds of an angel. Yeah, like some like, of them, they have like eight wings. Like they're angels like, have huge wings. Yeah, and sometimes they like turn into other. They like, split off into more wings. What? Angels are terrifying. Yeah, Wait, I mean what? the amount of force you would need to generate to lift a humanoid body yeah. up with those thick bones. Yeah, <laughs> unless <laughs> angels have. Bird bones. The X Man, known as Angel, specifically has hollow bones to allow for there to be less uh. mass to be lifted by his angel wings. But then, like, also other uh, mutants can just fly. Like, well, Rogue can fly. Yeah, but that's like a weird energy disposition thing. How does Superman fly? We don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, geez. I'm sorry, Beth. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone who was just trying to think of Harry Potter quotes during the movie. Oh, Mr. Potter's name is Henry Potter. Henry Potter, not Henry. Harry Potter. Excuse me, what? Yeah, you did. You kept so going. You, you're Mr. also Potter. a nerd. Yeah. But yeah, also, I shut up. Said... Nerds. Wow. <laughs> to Beth? Are you saying that's the best? I don't know. Ooh, this is getting uncomfortable. What? Rude. Merry Christmas! <laughs> you beautiful buildings and loans. Merry Good. Christmas, movie house. You're welcome, Katie, if you're listening to this. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Toad's Heads. Merry Christmas, Beth's impression of <laughs> Merry Christmas, Channing Tatum. Aww. Uh, <laughs> We've done this joke like four times. Never for a Christmas episode, though. <laughs> Totes Recall is hosted by Molly Chase, Beth Gibbs, Dan Jaquette, and Dan Linden. Produced by Beth Gibbs. New episodes of Totes Recall drop on the 15th of every month. For more information and bonus content, visit us at totesrecall.com. Thank you so much for listening.